So every year towards the end of the year, we talk about our favorite apps and services that we use and state of the apps. Well, today we're going to talk about the devices that we're using, the hardware that we're using in the very first state of the hardware. State of the hardware, 2023. Are you happy with 2023? I mean, I, I did wonder if you were oh, petitioned God for 2024. Oh, damn it. No, no. Yeah, wait no, a minute. We can't do that. It's the middle of the year. It's not even the middle of the year. <laughs> <laughs> it should be state of the hardware 2024. No, no, it really shouldn't be. Maybe in your mind you would like it to be, but like realistically, <laughs> it's 2023. Because there are a bunch of devices that by 2024, we will have upgraded from that we're going to talk about today. You don't know that, Mike. That's just wild speculation you have no you have no idea that that's true i'm suddenly having this feeling like i was tricked (laughs) i was tricked with this title and i didn't even realize it the way that i kind of think of this is you know we are professionals we're professional content creators professional business people professional consumers of content and like (laughs) with apps we've made a bunch of decisions about the things that we use and the why we choose them or why we work with them and so i thought it would be nice to maybe move that over to hardware and there'll be some stuff that people will know that we use or will have heard us talk about before but this especially this first year kind of gives the baseline and then as we go forward through future years we could talk about how it's changing similar to the idea of state of the apps i've got a bunch of categories we have the everyday carry we have work office entertainment travel and maybe a lightning round yes there may be a lightning round i also i have a last minute addition to this category list mike Uh that you don't know about although you you will have an item for it i think okay it is dogs dog gear i want to add to state of the hardware i have Um, some dog recommendations i'm gonna find somewhere else to put that in you know like i don't know if i wanted that kind of specific dog category Uh, well look i'm just telling you there's a dog category surprise you're gonna figure out where it goes hey here's the thing (laughs) this is a collaborative process if you decide you want a dog category, then so be it. There's a dog yeah. No, category. I did. I already decided it. Well, I mean, like, I, it will be called dogs. Yes. You know. <laughs> Don't necessarily think I'm going to update the artwork for this one, but <laughs> <laughs> now, now that you said that, I'm, I'm going to have to get some custom dog cortex artwork made, of course. <laughs> Dog tax. You know what? I'm going to leave that one with you. <laughs> you can, if you want to do that part, you could do that part. Okay, I will. So let's start with our everyday carry what goes in the pockets that's kind of what i was thinking about this right Mm -hmm. what phone are you using right now the iphone 14 pro okay not the max version okay i believe you've got the max version i have the max version i don't think we ever spoke about this this has been like one of the one of the reasons i actually wanted to do this episode is that especially towards the end of the year where we might be changing out hardware, our end of the year now is so kind of like focused on the show, Mm -hmm. the things that we do, that we never really get to talk about these things anymore. Like, I don't Mm -hmm. think we've had it. We used to have an episode where we would talk about the new phones and watches every year, and we haven't done that for years. Yeah, for years. Yeah, Because by the time we would get around (laughs) to it, it's just like... There's no point doing an entire episode about this anymore. So I thought, Mm. you know, this is one of the reasons I wanted to do this state of the hardware, because we can talk about it for a couple of minutes along with all the other stuff that we're going to talk about. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide the Pro rather than the Pro Max? I can't remember if it was this year or last year. You know, in life, sometimes you want to make decisions that cut down on your future decisions. You want to decrease the number of decisions you make. And I realized that... I keep fluctuating back and forth between like big phone, best phone, right? Or like the small phone or the regular size phone. And I just made a decision like I'm not going to make decisions about this anymore. I'm just going to buy like the quote normal size phone. Mm. I think every time I've bought the big one, it's like there are things I really like, but there are also frustrations. And it's the same thing with the little phone of like, God, do I really like the little phone? But there are also frustrations. And so I decided I'm not going to do this agony anymore every year. Like, I'm just going to buy whatever the like normal size phone is and leave it at that. So this this was my like, no more decisions, no more anxiety. This is just what I'm going to do. You see, I made that decision too many years ago and I chose most phone. Right. Most phone. And... This is where, like, I wonder if this decision for you will pay off over the next few years because it seems very clear that to me and to many people, of course, that Apple is going to adopt this, like, 
ultra model like Samsung have where the biggest phone will have the most stuff. Mm -hmm. So like the rumors for this year's iPhone will be significant camera improvements just for the big one. Yeah, yeah. So I wonder if, we'll see, you may level up to like, I'm going to just do one decision, but maybe I'll go most as well. Yeah, I, d- I don't it think so. It depends on the difference. Yeah. It might, you know, because we said this before, right? Like when they put the larger sensor in, I think it was this one. We're like, mm-hmm. oh, it's going to be, um, like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. There isn't really, I think, a lot that's actually happened with it, like realistically. I think if you're looking at very fine detail, yeah. like say, for example, you're taking photos of dogs, like, and you zoom yep. in on them, then you can see the difference. And in the times where I have shot raw, like, it is great. Yeah, the raw stuff is crazy. Right, but you've got to do it. And and I do think that it's going to take a couple of years still of Apple having this sensor to really unlock its full potential for them. Mm-hmm. But this next one will probably have the periscope lens, right, for the bigger zoom and all that kind of stuff. So who knows if that will be of interest to you, but we'll see. Yeah, I, I think this again is like the thing that I thought through is in the past I have done that exact thing of... I always want the better camera, better camera on big phone, buy big phone. Yep. But I have always slightly regretted it or not regretted it, but just found the trade-offs frustrating. And there are trade-offs, right? Like, the phones are big. Now, I like that, but I understand why somebody wouldn't, mm-hmm. especially if the benefit ends up being small, but the negatives are constant. Mm-hmm. You maybe get sometimes a better camera improvement, but if you don't like that the phone's bigger, that is every minute of every day that that's going to be getting in yes. your way. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah. It, it's the I can't ever not feel it in my pocket mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm. It's like it is it is there, always going. Hi, I'm a phone in your pocket. You can feel this right now. Whereas with the like normal size phone, it's just under that threshold for me. What case is your phone in? Oh, God. I just uh, thought of this. No, because like I didn't cases. put it in my list. The reason is because I don't use a case on my phone. Right. Hold on. I have to turn on the lights in my office so I can try to read what the case is. I did move to the MagSafe pop socket rather than just the pop socket stuck on the phone. Oh, how, wait. Wait. So we moved to what? There is a MagSafe pop socket. So it, it's not a case. It's just connecting to the MagSafe magnet yep. on the back. That's what you're saying. So it's the big oval, okay. right? But it's got a mount for a pop socket on it. And I did this because I'm trying to prepare for the time when I have to start using wireless charging. Hmm. And so then I'll be able to just take off the pop socket charge and put the pop socket back on to carry on with my day. Because that time is coming, especially like probably going to go USB-C this year. And Mm -hmm. so the docks that I have would have to change. And the docks that I have don't have a USB-C version. They're they're just like Qi charging versions or all the modern ones now. It's Mm -hmm. like people don't want you to be using docks with cables anymore. You know, like you stick it on top of the cable. I think my options there are going to shrink a lot. So that's one thing. But then also, I think in a couple of years time, you know, it still feels feasible that there will be an iPhone with no charging connector. Mm -hmm. And so then like... I can't be having a pop socket stuck to the back of the phone anymore because I would get my phone would become single use. Right, right, right. Okay. So I moved to the MagSafe pop socket. And I will say I have been pleasantly surprised. I was very dubious of it as to if it would hold. And mm-hmm. I have never, ever had it fall off. Ever. Okay. I'm I'm impressed by that. I would not have expected that. Yeah, this the one that I have is like I think it's like the second generation. Our mutual friend Alex told me that they bought the original one and it wasn't so secure. But hmm. they they obviously did something with the magnets for the kind of revised version and they and now it's like solid as a rock. Hmm. Oh, okay. But also easy to remove. Like they've found this perfect sweet spot. Like it's very easy to take off, but it also never comes off unexpectedly. Hmm. Okay. So the case that I'm using, which I just love, I've never been happier with a case. It's the Peak Design Mobile Everyday Loop Case. Oh my word, that's a lot lot of branding in there. (laughs) Well, yes, but it's like you're trying to describe every single part of it, right? Peak Design (laughs) is the company. uh, Mobile for your mobile phone. Every every day? I don't know, every day. Every day is their branding, right? They call their products every day. It's like oh, a okay. whole line of products, I think, the uh, everyday stuff. Oh, oh, I just realized. the yes. everyday backpack, right? Right. Too? Well, yes, I do have the everyday backpack, which will come up later. They also have <laughs> Slimlink trademark technology in this one. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't, I, don't, I don't see that as listed, but 
Okay, so there's there's two things about this that I love. First, it's a pretty minimal case. I guess that's why, because of that technology, it feels like it barely adds anything to the phone. It's still really protective. I have really dropped this phone a few times, and they've got just like a nice hard rim right around the cameras, which has completely saved it from getting smashed. Because I don't use the pop socket, they have a little loop on the back that you can just put one finger through, and I love it. It's like just in the right position. I feel like it's actually even in a better spot than some of the pop socket was with just being a little lower. So like every time I pick up the phone, I can just slide my ring finger through this little loop on the bottom and have the phone really secure. And then also for me, they have this mounting system. That's Slim Link. The mounting system. Oh, that's the Slim Link. Okay. This mounting system is, it's MagSafe, but it's also a physical connector. And I have a mount for my bike that is the opposite end of that. Mm -hmm. And it is like when a company designs something that works well, it's so satisfying. Like being able to just snap my phone onto this mount on the bike and know that it is physically secured, like it is physically not coming off unless I press the two little buttons on the back to pop it off and then it comes off so easily. Love it. So like I just... I adore this case. I think it's easily the best phone case I've ever used. Yeah, this was, I remember they released their Kickstarter campaign for this yes, like six yes. months before MagSafe was introduced and they ended up making it compatible with MagSafe, which I will say I was really nervous mm -hmm. for them because it felt like a very bold move at a risky time and that ended up being the case. But mm -hmm. they found a way to kind of make it all work together. Because you can use MagSafe accessories of these cases too, right? I think. Yeah. So that that's also the thing that yeah. I really like about it is I don't have any physical chargers anymore in my house. I have all of these. I didn't even bother looking up the brand because every time I buy them off of Amazon, it's like some weird different company is always making them. Yeah. But they're, the, like, they're these little stands that are the three-in-one chargers. Mm -hmm. So it has like MagSafe for the phone. It has a little charger on top for the watch. And then behind it, it has a little spot for your AirPods case. I swear I've got like six of them in the house and no two of them are made by the same company because it's just like very yeah. strange if you don't want your house to catch on fire you a lot of these products are available from companies like belkin and stuff like i yes. again i i'm well known i am a i am a wireless charging denier <laughs> i don't like it it makes me nervous i just want to use a cable i don't like how hot everything gets like i'm just not a fan of it but I, I, I think that's so funny because to me, wireless charging, like the MagSafe wireless charging thing, once they got that system down, easily one of my like just small delights in life is I just put these chargers everywhere I'm likely to put down the phone and it's functionally completely solved the problem of thinking about my phone charge. I know I'm the weirdo here yeah because like everyone that i know loves it including people in my household <laughs> unnamed other household every members, every yes. youtuber <laughs> loves it you know every podcast everyone loves wireless charging except for me and yeah. I, I don't know why i'm just like something about it it just doesn't feel right yeah no, no i get it charging via magnets it just seems strange <laughs> get my look in the universe, we only have two things. We have atoms and we have electromagnetism. So if you think you're getting away from magnets in any kind of charging that you're doing, I have some bad news I for just, you. <laughs> well, I don't like a charging method where the method of charging generates extra heat. That, to me, feels not good. Again, I'll, I'll sit you down and tell you about electricity uh, one day. There's heat everywhere. You just don't notice it. Mm. I don't want it. Yeah, so I love it. That was one of the critical things for me on, on a case. Is like, if a case doesn't work with MagSafe chargers, it's just dead. I refuse to use it. Mm. This is a case that's so good, I would consider not upgrading the phone until the next version of this case is out. That's how much I love this case. It's so good. The case design is one of these things which is so terrifying to me as a prospect. Mm -hmm. Now we are in the world of making products, right? Mm -hmm. The idea of having a product line that is dependent on a thing. Yeah. But you have no idea what the specs are until one day when then all of your customers want the product next <laughs> week. Yes, I know, I know. It feels like a horrible business to be in because as well, like then you end up getting in the shady business, right, of trying to get the measurements. Yeah. Which is like a thing that a lot of companies do, which I totally understand why they do it. But even then, 
you're still making a best bet, Mm -hmm. right? Like if you've got some kind of measurements from a factory in China somewhere telling you these are the measurements of the new iPhone and you make cases on that, like go for it. Companies do it. Like some companies get it from Apple. Most of them don't. Right. But then you have produced however many thousands of units of a product that you don't even really know if it's going to fit. Yeah, it's terrifying. And and also, especially if you are not getting the measurements from Apple, you realize, oh, those manufacturers may have incentives to not tell you the correct size either, which is a bit like, oh, yeah, God. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine the pressure that peak design feel in September every year. I will say right now, Cortex brand will never make an iPhone case because I couldn't sleep at night. No. <laughs> it would just be too much stress. It's too much. It's, it's yeah. I mean, also, I am, I'm like a bit, and I think you would agree with me here, I'm a little bit hesitant to ever want to be beholden to somebody else mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. way. Yep. That like, if you make phone cases, you are always beholden to the decisions of the phone manufacturer. Mm-hmm. What if one day you make cases for Samsung phones and Samsung's like, gang, we did it. We made a phone you don't need a case for. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that. What are you going to do? Like if that's Mm. your whole business, they're like, the glass is indestructible and we've created this new like silicone back and it's like feels fantastic and it's you never need a case. Mm. Now, there'll still be people that want to get cases for like aesthetic reasons, but most people are buying cases because they don't want to break their phone. Yeah, yeah. All that kind of stuff is just like that is a terrifying prospect to me of like being completely beholden to the whims of another company and whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't feel like we have any particular ideas of phone cases. But what I do like about this Peak Design line, this like Slim Link line or the mobile ecosystem, there's a lot of branding now, <laughs> is they have all of these little accessories, right? You can get different mounts for different modes of transport. You can get little mounts that you can just stick on the wall which I mm-hmm. think is kind of cool. So like you could put one next to your bathroom mirror and watch YouTube videos while you brush your teeth or whatever. It is a cool system and it's like used in all of the places you would use MagSafe and there are MagSafe mounts for all of these things, but it has a locking system and so yeah. it's not going to come off. So you can lock it to your bike and not worry that if you go over a pothole that your phone's going to fly off. That's exactly right. And I don't know if you have noticed, but if you do any of the like food delivery stuff in London, yeah, I have noticed that a crazy number of the drivers are using this system. Oh, they really? Make a, they make a mount for motorcycles as well, and they make a mount for bikes. And I just like I tune into it of like the number of of people using these delivery services. Oh, this bike where, mount is really really well made. Like I can just yeah. look at it and be like, oh, that's well made that is a well made strong thing yeah it's like but these guys are taking their phone on and off the bike a hundred times a day and like they cannot have it be insecure in the slightest and so it's like i think they they've kind of like cornered the food delivery market phone case but also the benefit too is like you've got to be able to take it off and on easily too Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right it can't just be like you've clamped your phone to the bike and that's the end of it like you've also got to be able to pick it up and go and i'm sure it's helpful for you like they make a bunch of like mounts for tripods and all that kind of stuff so if you're ever shooting something on your phone it's also helpful for you as a content creator yeah yeah i got the little tripod one for travel stuff just to have and it's 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 really nicely built it's like a perfect little oh i can just i can have this here even kind of nice just for doing like facetime calls while you're traveling to just you know set it up and not have to use your computer do you see though why i could never use this (laughs) because if i I got into this system I, i have to upgrade my phone as soon as possible for my job right yeah that like then I would like my life would be revolving around this system I built and I have to wait for two, I can't use it for two months of every year. Yeah, no, that, that would it would not it would not work for you. But I think as is clear, I cannot possibly recommend it highly enough. <laughs> what Apple Watch do you wear? Or what watch do you wear? Please do not allow me to be presumptuous. It's yeah, just how, watch. That, how how dare you, Mike? Mm-hmm. How dare you assume that uh, I'm wearing an Apple Watch? Uh, so I'm wearing an Apple Watch. <laughs> so i actually i don't remember if i told you this before but i don't actually know which apple watch i'm using because when i was in hawaii earlier this year we ended up setting up a couple of family members with apple watches and trying to get them to where we were in hawaii on time wasn't really going to work and so my uncle-in-law took the watch right off my wrist, and I was very happy to give it to him. Uh, and I set it, I set him up with what was my 
Series 8, I guess, would have been at the time uh, watch. I don't think it would have been an 8. Or maybe it was a 7. I think whatever it was probably it was, a 7. Uh, whatever it was at the time. And so then I came home and I just set up one of my older Apple Watches, I guess the 6. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and I was waiting for like the next cycle to come around for the watch. I was extremely tempted by the Ultra when, it, when they released mm-hmm. that. I was like, ooh... Can I buy that Ultra? But I just couldn't stand the silver color at all. So I, I passed on that. So I'm just like, I'm just waiting for the next cycle. But what I really want is I want like a black Ultra for sure. That's what I'm looking for. I'm using an Apple Watch Series 7. Mm-hmm. I'm using the gold one, which I love, the gold stainless steel one. The Series 8 wasn't enough of an upgrade for me. I feel like two years is a pretty good upgrade cycle, even for me as a person mm-hmm. who talks about this stuff professionally. I don't think that they really, and I understand, but they don't add enough hardware stuff every year. And it tends to be the last few years they've added sensors, like health sensors, where the impact can be smaller. Yeah, of course. The of sensors course. in the Series 8 weren't for me anyway, right? They were applicable for like ovulation tracking and stuff. So that wasn't so helpful for me. Mm-hmm. And the Series 6, whenever they added the blood oxygen sensor, mm-hmm. the way that they pitched that was so weak at the mm-hmm. time that like there really hasn't been anything super useful from the health perspective. Like this is a knockout success for me since the ECG. Mm -hmm. But there is, you know, potential of they're talking of in the next few years, they might have blood glucose monitors in the watches, which would just be like a wild thing to have. Oh, God. If if they ever crack that, I I feel like that is going to be like Apple stock to the moon. It's going to be incredible. If they can ever, ever nail that. I think they'll do it. I genuinely think they'll do it because they've been working on it for so long. There was a report recently that they'd made a breakthrough, like they're getting closer. And it's non-invasive too, right? Like there's Mm -hmm. nothing pricking you in the skin. Um, So for me, it's every two years. And when the Ultra came out, I wasn't sure if that was the watch for me. Like it Mm -hmm. seemed super large, you know, like from the imagery and stuff. And I decided I just wasn't going to look at one. Like, Mm -hmm. just don't go to the store. Don't look at it. (laughs) Don't worry about it. Ah, the classic, if you don't want a dog, don't visit the pound, right? (laughs) I avoided Apple stores for months. And then when I was in LA in January, I was hanging out with our friend David Sparks from Mac Power Users. And he just said, give me your wrist. And he just put his watch on my wrist. (laughs) And then I knew I wanted an Apple Watch Ultra. Yeah. But I just decided that I would wait. Like, I would, because I would also like it if maybe they had some color options. Mm. Like, I like the silver, but I would like to maybe make a choice rather than it being the only one. I like the design of the Apple Watch Ultra. That's the biggest thing for me because my main problem with the Apple Watch is the Apple Watch has looked essentially the same forever. It's interesting you mentioned that because, I mean, for me with the Ultra, the thing would be I just want a bigger screen. Like, Mm -hmm. that's my number one feature request. But even for me, a dramatically unfashion sensitive person who likes things consistent and the same in my life, I have felt like the Apple Watch has gone over some kind of threshold where I could die of boredom looking at it. Yes. And, and like, I am so unsensitive to this. But I think like, if I am feeling this way, there has to be just monstrous pent up demand for any kind of design change. Which I think is probably why the Ultra did quite well. I think it's done quite well. I see them quite mm. a lot. And I think it's because it has a new design. I mean, you see this all the time. Every time Apple releases an iPhone with a big new design, it always sells the best, right? Mm. Just makes sense. People want new. And like, it's why I wear the gold Apple Watch, because I just think it looks different. Mm. Like it's just, at least it's got something to it, but I'm really fed up of the like rounded corner design. The Ultra is interesting to me because it's like boxy. Mm. It's, it's got something that it looks visibly different. So that's exciting to me. I'm going to wait for the next upgrade cycle. I'm hoping that they will revise it in some way this year. They probably will because it was such a hit maybe. So they'll do another one. And I would love it if they had some different colors. The rumors are that the next iPhone will have a titanium frame, so they will be coloring that. So my hope is there will be some color options for the Ultra, too. Ooh, that'd be nice. What wallet do you use? Logic would dictate that you're using the Peak Design wallet or whatever. Well, uh, so no, I'm using something else that has just as long of a name, the Caxgeck (laughs) pop-up card holder (laughs) wallet with money clip. RFID blocking six card capacity. Uh, so 
I was looking for a wallet. Does this have an AirTag holder? So this is it, right? Okay, so AirTags are one of these things that have just, as soon as I had a few of them, it's like, I want an AirTag in everything important that I can own that I can lose. If we were going to pick a winner for State of the Hardware, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like how you have your unofficial app pick in State yeah, no, of I the don't, app, I don't, I don't do that. Which you yeah, don't okay. do. You definitely don't do. I think it would be fair to say that just like if you take one thing away from this conversation today, it's like air tags mm-hmm. are awesome. If you have yeah. an iPhone, you should have air tags on your luggage, on your keys, like everything. They're yeah. excellent. It's an excellent product. The only thing that kind of kills me about them is it sounds strange for how small they are. They are a little bulky, and I yeah. think that the shape is awkward. Yeah, I would just want them to e- just put in like the tiniest hole so that you don't have to have a case that's always holding the things. But e- even that aside, they're amazing. Here's what I'll say on the size and the design. I agree with you. They're a little big, but I would take that and have replaceable batteries rather than giving Apple like... 29 pounds every time the battery runs out which mm. when they were in design it's like people are like this, this is going to be the way that it is right they're going to have like a battery life and then you'll have to buy a new one but like i just replaced the batteries on all of mine and mm. i bought like 20 batteries for five pounds yeah, yeah so yeah. it's like i wished that they were a bit smaller but i will take that because i can replace the battery in them yeah i think i think it's an interesting trade-off ideally i'd love it like a like a wireless charging right like you use that uh use the apple watch charger for something else right like can mm. you can you have a tiny little uh wireless charging thing in there but then it would but still need to be as physically large as the charger would allow but anyway. to be clear this is the most minor of complaints yep. because the the quality of life improvement for putting air tags on as many things as you can is insane. It's like just completely changes the way I interact with objects. And once I started down this path, I was like, one of the very high things for me to have an air tag on is my wallet. And I ordered like every wallet on Amazon that that had any kind of air tag holder and this for me was the clearest winner by a huge margin. I love this little wallet. Like I'm pretty minimal with my wallet. I don't have very many cards. This is just the right size for holding a few cards and holding a few bills and then you're all set. But somehow the the engineering of the way they make the AirTag fit into the wallet It is the most minimal an AirTag can possibly feel on a wallet. They put it in backwards so it's the metal side out and they carved out a little space in the physical wall of the wallet to take most of the bulk. It's fantastic. I love this wallet so much. It's great. I also just love kind of like the sturdiness of it. It just feels good as an object to hold. So uh, highly recommended. I want to make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't for a wallet, but this is for something where if you don't want an AirTag in your wallet. I have not used this product, but the theory of it is sound. It's called the Chipolo card. So this is effectively a card size, like a credit card size, probably like the thickness of two credit cards, but the shape of a credit card tracking device that works with the Find My Network. Hmm. So... Apple also made the ability for the Find My tracking to be available to third parties. Mm -hmm. And Chipolo is a company that works with Apple. And this card will do most of what you need. But the basic thing is like, can connect to iPhones for Bluetooth tracking, right? Like that's the whole thing. Okay, so it's a pseudo credit card Mm -hmm. that is the Find My object. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Just in case you don't want to have a wallet which has an air tag stuck to the side of it. Like, and I, I don't like the visual of that. Neither would mm-hmm. I like that in my back pocket, right? Like, mm-hmm. I just think that would be uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. If you if you put the wallet in your back pocket, this is not going to work. Yes, uh, work. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But this might work, right? And, like, mm. Chipolo is also one of the companies that makes, like, air tag competitors. And theirs is about the same price, but is a f- different physical shape. And they don't have the exact same feature set, but it might be the features that you want Mm. And I think the main one, like, you know, they can have them make sounds and stuff like that. But the main thing for me about the Find My stuff is that it connects to the Find My network, which is basically any iPhone in the world can help you locate your thing. And that's what these products can do too. Does it, okay, but for me also, the critical thing is, 
Does it do the thing where your phone can point in the direction of the object? No. Okay, well then, that's like a deal breaker yeah, for me. I understand it's that, do right? It doesn't have yeah. the precision finding, and that's like a thing that AirTags have, and uh, if you have a modern iPhone, can can do that part. This mm-hmm. part, I don't believe they have opened up to other people. Mm. But it, this is like maybe as good as you can get a Bluetooth tracker is something that has the Find My Network in it. And also Google's doing it now. And actually, as we're recording this, like Google and Apple are working together on some of this stuff now too, so it might get a bit better. Hmm, interesting. Okay. I need the it points to where your thing is. Mm -hmm. Like, that is surprisingly to me the feature that really makes these trackers different. Like, I've used a lot of trackers over the years, and I've always found them useful. But the ability to point and and be like, it's six feet to your left is killer. Like, it makes such a difference. I love that they put that into the AirPods Pro 2 as well. The U1 oh, finding, yeah. like yeah, yeah. Is, uh, that's the, uh, I've never used that precision finding for an AirTag before, but I've used it a couple of times for my AirPods. Yeah, the the AirPods is another one of my everyday carry things, and the yeah. moment they had the, it's part of Find My, and you can point to it, I was like sold. I need no other features except yeah. from that, like immediate purchase. Although wow. for me, the big thing is just how much better the noise canceling and transparency became, and. But my biggest thing is the volume adjustment. I thought I wouldn't like that, but the ability to adjust volume with the AirPods Pro 2, fantastic. Yeah, I use it all the time. Really good. (laughs) My wallet is the Bellroy card sleeve. Oh, right. Is this, yeah, this is a classic. Is this, I think this is the one I used to use or something similar to it. I think a lot of people have had this this product across their desk at some point. Like it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Simple. This is a good one. Yeah. yeah, I don't carry cash. You can put a little cash in there, but I don't really like cash in general. Um, this is just like you put a couple of cards in the middle and a couple of cards on the outside. And so, like for me, it's like I'll put my credit card and like two debit cards in the inside, mm. put my driving license on the outside, and if I have like a hotel room key or something, it will go on the other side. Like nice and simple, very slim. For me, I do, you know, I I know you shouldn't, but I put my wallet in my back pocket, so I like it to be as slim as possible. Mm-hmm. And this for me is something which is super slim, but also stylish. It has that system where to get to the cards on the inside, you pull this little tab and yes. it just pops the yeah, cards yeah. up. Yeah, that was always nice. Yeah, yeah, very simple, and and I've I've always really liked this. I've I'm onto like my third of mm-hmm. these. One I lost, and one just got worn down. And it's like this is my wallet. I will buy this wallet. <laughs> For as long as Bellroy make it. Yeah, and when I when I had that one, I had the it was like the brown leather one, I think. That's what I have. And I also really liked the way it looked as it aged. Yeah, uh, like so, like some some materials just look nice as they pick up little scuffs. And I thought like, ooh, this this wallet looks fantastic. The longer I have it, it also gets stretched a little bit in the right mm-hmm. way. You know, like stretches to conform to what you have in there. And yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of this product. For anyone who's listening to this right now, you're probably picky about products, and one of the i think one of the things that you realize is that a big part of trying to find products you like is really about trying to find companies that you like because they have designers that are like matching whatever it is you're looking for in stuff and i feel like ooh, peak design is one of those companies for me like they have a lot of stuff that i like and use and bellroy was another one of these companies of like when i found it like oh great like you make a bunch of stuff that's like hitting my needs of uh, what I'm looking for. So yeah, it's it's. Uh, I feel like product recommendations are are often implicitly recommendations of check out the other things that this company makes mm-hmm. if you like this one thing. And in a way that I think I was less aware of this, just like when you're looking for stuff on Amazon, it's like yeah, but you're also trying to find companies with designers that make things that you like yeah spoiler alert i'm gonna mention bellroy about four more times <laughs> okay well there we go <laughs> and just to round out like air tags i have an air tag on my keys and i i actually really like apple's air tag their leather air tag key ring mm-hmm. i think i think it's really nice and i think with a uh, engraved you know get like the engraving on air tags like i have an air tag engraved with my initials mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then in the key ring, I just think it makes it look just like a nice key ring. Like, so, could I have air tag on the keys? We do the same thing in the house of like, both my wife and I, we each like picked an emoji and it's mm-hmm. like, this is the emoji for all of your things. This is the emoji for all of my things. 
And again, that's a thing where when Apple first rolled out that engraving, I kind of thought it was like an upsell gimmick and I completely changed my mind on it. It's like, no, this is very important. Like, and we now do that emoji engraving on basically all of the stuff like Apple pencils too, because yep. some unnamed person in the house is constantly losing her pencils and trying to take mine. <laughs> and so we, we have a record of like officially but who lost their pencil and who kept their pencil with the little emojis on it? I wish they would do a more emoji. That every emoji should be available, in my opinion. Oh, are they not? Nope. Is it just a limited selection? Limited I didn't set, realize that. Limited set of emoji. And mm. it is actually free. Oh, is it? I thought it wasn't. Oh, okay. Huh. Am I crazy? Did it used to be an upsell? I, I don't it, remember. Huh? I mean, what it mm. does do is, you know, if you're buying something when it's like just released, it will take longer to come right. to Because it comes from a different place. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, well, my apologies, Apple. I take it back. You're not trying to upsell. You don't need to apologize to Apple. It's fine. <laughs> They're going to be okay. <laughs> no, I was I was really going to hurt sales there with people upsell. It's like no. everyone's like, you know, so many people just put AirTags in their cart and then remove them. <laughs> Anything else in EDC? Oh, you know what? Hold on a second. Okay. I've got something, I've got something else that's like EDC adjacent. Let me okay. see if I can just find it. Hold on a second. All right. The product name isn't written on here, but... It doesn't matter because it's the concept of the thing, right? Okay. So I was trying to think about like everyday carry stuff. Like we've covered the everyday carry stuff because I try to go real light. But there is sort of another everyday carry item, which is my belt. And at some point I discovered that they make belts that don't have notches. They have a ratchet mechanism. So I'm going to do this in front of the microphone. Okay. So it's a belt that has like little notches on the inside of the belt. And then the, the buckle is like a one-way ratchet to yeah. attach to those. Love it. It's so much nicer than a traditional belt because you can always make it fit exactly right. And I feel like this does count as an everyday carry item because I have it on me every day uh as the final thing this is interesting i'm i'm on amazon right now and like they make this kind of belt that look like regular belts yeah so so no one would ever know You'd that it's know. not a regular belt yeah yes here we go okay i found the 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 one that i really like is called flintronic oh i see it here yeah yeah so that's yeah. that's the one that i've got and you can get it in like any different color with different belt buckle styles no one would ever know like it's not a weird looking belt i think when i just describe it people kind of think it's the velcro shoes of belts you but know, it's not I was that thinking it's like putting laces on velcro shoes <laughs> what this is like yeah, so I really like it. It's just a, a small increase in comfort for oh, your belt always fits exactly right every day. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have that as my last everyday carry recommendation. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by our friends at Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for letting you build your brand and grow your business online. When you set up a Squarespace website, you are going to stand out from the crowd. It is going to be beautiful with one of their professionally designed, best-in-class website templates. You will be able to engage directly with your audience through Squarespace email campaigns. And you can sell anything, your products, services, even the content that you create with a Squarespace store. Squarespace has got you covered. Let me dig in to some of those things. Let's talk about those templates. When you go to Squarespace and get started, it is as easy as just browsing their categories to find the type of website that you want to make. And they have templates that are beautifully designed of the page structure there to be the perfect starting place for you. But everything is super customizable. In just a few clicks, you can change the layout, the fonts, the colors to really make it feel like yours. I mentioned Squarespace email campaigns. You can encourage your visitors to sign up as email subscribers and start them on the journey to becoming loyal customers. Again, you choose one of the beautiful templates, you customize it the way that you want. Plus, every email that you send out has built-in analytics to measure the impact of every send. And what about those online stores? Whether you sell physical or digital goods, Squarespace has all of the tools and integrations that you need to start selling online and then to help you with all of the insights you're going to need to grow your business so you can see what your most popular products are, which channels are the most effective for you, and you can turn that into a marketing plan. I have been using Squarespace for nearly 15 years, I think. 
And I've built so many websites with them because when I have something I want to put online, it's the first place I go because what I want to do is get my ideas out into the world and they make it so incredibly simple to do so. Go to squarespace.com slash cortex and you can sign up for a free trial with no credit card required. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code cortex to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That is squarespace.com slash cortex. Then when you sign up, use the offer code cortex to get 10% off your first purchase and show your support for the show. Our thanks to Squarespace for their support of this show and all of Relay FM. All right, let's move into our work devices. Okay, work stuff. So we should start with computers. Yes. Um, I'm, assu- I, I'm assuming, like me, you have what you would consider like a desktop and a laptop. Don't make assumptions about me, Mike. So tell me what you have then. So I have a desktop and I have a laptop. Okay, that uh, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> so look, just like with the phones, I also made the decision a little while ago of like, I'm only buying laptops from here on out. Yes. So, I am talking to you on a desktop, but this is like a legacy desktop, right? This is my, quote, writing computer, iMac Pro, which is the last desktop computer I have or ever will purchase. Yep. And it is now my last Intel computer as well, yep. which, which is like increasingly annoying every day. But I just made the decision of like, I'm just getting laptops from here on out. Apple has finally solved the external display annoyances, which were always a hesitation for years. Like they've fix that what a funny coincidence that they did that after they started making displays uh i'm sure that's completely unrelated Mm. but yeah so i'm just sticking with laptops from here on out because i like the modularity of being able to like swap them around or do different things with them yeah are you still working on that gold imac that you got or like what's your setup so the the gold imac is sitting in a box and that is going to go home at some point i'm gonna Mm -hmm. make that a home computer for me my quote unquote desktop is a MacBook Pro. Okay. So I have a fourteen inch M one Max MacBook Pro that is in a docked position. It's in one of those twelve South book arc stands. Mm-hmm. I've got the same one. Yep. It's great. It's attached to an OWC Thunderbolt dock, which I have just for all of my various IO for all of my audio gear and stuff. And then two monitors that I have. So I have uh, a Dell monitor and an LG monitor. These were both monitors that I had while I was waiting for Apple to produce the studio display. Mm -hmm. And so one day I will replace these monitors, but now I'm kind of waiting to see if there's a new monitor from Apple. Hmm. I would like a pro monitor. Like I would like a monitor that has ProMotion. I would like a monitor that's maybe mini mini LED, and I think they will make it. And so I'm probably just going to wait until they make something, which is not the Pro Display XDR. Oh, okay. Okay, So you're looking for a monitor that sits in between... Like a Studio Display Pro or something, which I'm very convinced they will make, but it might just be a case of me waiting. But like these Mm -hmm. two are good for me. And I moved to the two display lifestyle at one point. It was like an experiment. And and for my recording machine, which is what I consider to be my desktop computer, so I record and edit my podcasts on, um, I have one monitor in landscape and one monitor in portrait. And the mm. portrait monitor always has my recording app and my video or audio calling app on it, right? So I can just look at them and always see that the counters are running and all that kind of stuff. So, mm. and then I, that's just over there and I can't do anything to it. And then everything else that I'm doing will be on the main display. And so I'm I'm happy with that setup. And whenever I do change, I would probably always keep a second monitor around. But that 14-inch MacBook Pro was my laptop until Apple released the 13-inch M2 MacBook Air, Mm. which is my laptop and is my favorite Mac ever made. It is the most perfect blend of power and portability that I've Mm -hmm. ever experienced. And like I was very happy with my MacBook Pro, and then I saw the MacBook Air. Like Apple sent me one for review, and I was like, well, I put this in my backpack, and I don't even know it's in there. It's like Mm -hmm. perfect because I do take a laptop home and to the studio every day. Like I do that. Um, And the MacBook Air is usually docked on the second desk that I use, which is when I'm not recording or editing, I don't sit at the desk that I'm on. It's like surrounded by kind of like you read like a lot of audio stuff. Like I have curtains, acoustic curtains, and I don't like, I feel like I'm shut in this little (laughs) cave rather yeah. than out in the studio. So I yeah. sit at you've a got a desk. cozy recording space. Exactly, which is best for audio, but it's mm-hmm. not necessarily conducive to a comfortable all-day working environment when I'm like 
prepping for shows, doing emails, doing Cortex brand work and stuff like that. And I have a bigger desk for that. That MacBook Air, when I'm at that desk, is plugged into a Apple Studio display. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy with that. So that's kind of like my lineup. And then, you know, that laptop will go with me when I'm at home. Any trip that I take, I will just take the MacBook Air and it's perfectly suited for anything I throw at it. Yeah, I have a I have a confession to make, which is that you showed me that MacBook Air. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time I had ever seen one, and I was sold on it immediately. Yeah, I and knew you were going to buy one when I saw the way you you turned it over in your hands. It's just uh, it's like man, sometimes they make just a perfect balance of things, and that was that was it. I was so impressed with that computer just in person, and I did happen to have this place in my life where i did kind of need a new computer because in my basement writing area i had a computer it, okay i don't even know how this computer uh this laptop had stuck with me all these years i was like oh i need i i'm i want to set up my basement office i need to find a spare laptop and i have like some ones that are just broken like they literally don't turn on but the only laptop I had that still worked was so old. It had the UK style keyboard on it, which meant, oh, this was around at the point when I was still transitioning out of like working as a teacher because I had to use the UK keyboards and I like readjusted myself to just use them everywhere. So it's like, I don't even know how old that computer was, but I was like, okay, into the basement you go because I just need you as a writing computer down there. But it was fine, but even for the task of just typing in a text file while running an external display, that computer was having some problems. And the moment I saw that MacBook Air, I think my very first question to you was about like, does it run external displays well, Mike? And you're like, it does. <laughs> Mentally sold. So I got one of those things as well. And boy, it has been great for just like a couple of little like overnight trips that we've done, like to be able to take that instead of the regular like macbook pro is so nice I, I agree with you it's basically a perfect laptop i'm still really happy to have the macbook pro as the quote desktop computer to do stuff like video renders but that macbook air is going to be like okay you live in the basement you are most of the time just a writing computer connected to an external display but if i've ever got to travel anywhere like that is the laptop that is coming with me no questions asked it is so good i hope they keep that form factor forever i can't imagine them changing it now like this feels like the laptop that was born out of apple silicon mm, mm. you know if you think about it they tried to do something similar to this the macbook the 12 inch macbook and it was compromised yeah that's true in so many ways and in a way that this one just isn't and i think it's because they can control the whole power consumption piece and and the battery life and everything because they have more control over the the silicon that's going in it total control so i think this is the laptop that was born out of that yeah i think my my mental framing of it is more like this is the platonic ideal mm -hmm. of what the MacBook Air was always supposed to be. Yeah. As someone who purchased and massively regretted that very first MacBook Air, mm -hmm. I was like, this is what I always wanted it to be. And they knocked it out of the park with that one. As audio professionals, we have audio gear. We do. I'm not going to run through every single piece that I own, but I think mm -hmm. the three most important parts for me on my microphone my audio interface and my headphones mm -hmm. these three items that i am going to suggest these are not recommendations for the listener to buy mm. these are what i use as a professional my microphone is the neumann kms 105 um, i love this microphone because it does the best job of making me sound like me mm -hmm. which when you edit yourself hours and hours of yourself I find that to be more acceptable. When I hear myself through this microphone, it sounds like how my voice sounds. Where other microphones I've used may make me sound too bassy, and I don't like that that sound. But the Neumann does a good job. It is an XLR microphone. It doesn't plug in via USB-C, so I have to have an interface to turn that analog signal into a digital one. And I use a product called the Sound Devices USB Pre-2. What I like about this is it is a... Very customizable piece of equipment, but all of the customization is done on the equipment. There's no software. Hmm. That's really good for me because I've owned this thing now for probably... Near, I've owned this thing for 10 years. 
Hmm. And I don't intend to ever buy another one of them. It will keep working until it breaks and no software is going to outdate it. And my headphones are the Bayer Dynamic DT770 Pro. For me, it's not about audio quality. Like lots of people talk about the audio quality of these headphones. That's not so important to me. These are very hmm. comfortable. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at them. They, they look extremely padded. Yes, they're very padded. That's the most important part to me because like on days like today, I will wear these headphones for like four or five hours yeah. without a break. So I want something that is really comfortable. It doesn't press on my head too much. They're very soft. They also have a coiled cable, which is helpful for getting mm. out of the way of stuff. Yeah, coiled cables are nice. Mm -hmm. This is one of those cases where I kind of feel like I have sort of general principles around stuff. I'm generally trying to do like fewer things but better things. Mm -hmm. But the fewer is more important. And this is one of these cases where I'm just using the uh, the Apple Studio headphones. which The AirPods Pro Max. Yeah, the, the AirPods. No, AirPods Max. The AirPods, AirPods, AirPods Pro Max Studio. Ultra. Ones. Right, ultra overhead headphones. Metal edition, I think, is the full name for them. Because it's this is just one of these areas of like, I just don't want to have multiple sets of headphones around. I Like, I already have the little AirPods and I have an overhead set. And this is a case of like, I'd rather have fewer things. So mm -hmm. I'll take the headphones that have some compromises, like the Apple head over ear headphones. They're obviously not amazing for podcasting, but they're fine for podcasting. And I'd rather just have fewer things in this one case. That's what I'm using. I like them. I would never really recommend them for any kind of professional as a as a podcasting headphones. But I do think they're overall like pretty good over ear headphones. But they do lose out on comfort over a long period of time like yeah, you just like can't wear them all day and it would be my number one request for apple uh if and when they ever revise these things it's like you've got to make them lighter apple uh, i don't know why they have to be so heavy yep. yeah they are really truly excellent airplane headphones yes they are i do not like them for podcast recording headphones yeah I think you've used them while traveling, or have you changed your mind on that? No, I, I, when I travel and record, I will use them. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it just means I don't have to bring two pairs of headphones on a trip. Yeah, Because exactly. I will want them in my bag for when I listen to things on planes. I don't really want to have like a second set of headphones in my luggage. Mm -hmm. So I will use them for that. And so we'll have two of the world's most expensive cable <laughs> just like <laughs> hanging around. That's also a thing where one of my other little principles with like stuff in your life is try to pay attention to like things you use frequently or like small little annoyances. I think people really underrate the increase in quality of life of like, can you spend some money to fix in an everyday annoyance or like a high touch annoyance like if you have some like light switch that you press every single day and it's not good like just you know go on youtube and look into like how to change that it's totally worth doing those kinds of things yeah. i think people underrate how valuable it is to get rid of small annoyances and i just realized today while we were preparing for this show oh i have a frequent annoyance which is around the world's most expensive cable to connect the apple headphones to my audio interface which is it's just a little too short and so it's always trailing over my keyboard and being slightly in the way. Mm -hmm. And it's like, ah, right. Pay attention to the things that annoy you in life. For $3, I can buy a coiled extension cable for the headphone to plug that into. And it's like, yes, I will do that. I will fix this like tiny annoyance in my life that is there every time I'm recording a podcast or recording audio for a video. Just try to keep those things in mind. But to round out my own audio equipment, I have the Shure SM58 microphone. Why? I cannot remember at all. I just have this one now. I like it. And I know your favorite is that for my audio interface, I'm using the Zoom F6 multi-track field recorder, which I really like and is entirely appropriate to task. Highly recommend it. Super recommended for people that use boom mics in the field <laughs> to get their 32-bit float recording. 
Yep, yep, it's great. <laughs> As it says on the website, for those hard to reach places. <laughs> yes, yeah, specifically designed for outdoor use and has six XLR inputs, Perfect. of which I only ever use one. <laughs> it's going to be super good when the apocalypse comes and your sound recorder will still be left behind. <laughs> yeah, it has a loop attachment for my belt, so I can use it very easily with my ratchet belt. <laughs> 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 Turns out this is part of the everyday carry. We didn't yeah. even know. <laughs> didn't even know. What's it doing in this segment? I mean, I know you make fun of me for using this thing. I genuinely really do like it. Uh, it has a little knob right on the front, front so I can adjust my audio input. I can like, it just, I don't know. It has the buttons, physical buttons for the couple of things that I want to use. No, and, I agree yeah. with all that. Like, I, I feel that way about my USB Pre 2. Mm hmm. There are many products that exist that are not as extreme as the one that you have that would give you those things. But like, mm -hmm. of all of the things in your audio environment that cause me problems, that is maybe the fewest now. Yeah, and it's also for the same reason with yours of there's zero software component, right? It's just like a couple of buttons. I'm a big fan of Zoom. Like Zoom now make a product which is more focused around podcasting. Hmm. Steven has one. And I've been meaning to look into getting, like I have a, a the Zoom H6, which is what I take with me when I'm on the go, right? It is my like field recorder, I suppose, like my actual travel recording device. Like I don't mm -hmm. take my USB pre uh, when I, cause that's, I, I would worry to break that. And I've had a Zoom forever. And this is what they're so good at, like is making products to be taken out into the world. Mm -hmm. It is called the PodTrack P4. They actually now have a few products in this uh, area. And it is just built a little bit more in the mind of podcast recording than what they usually do, which is like hmm. music and TV production and that kind of stuff. It just has a few really interesting features that uh, I just thought were really cool. I think one of the things it does is it will allow you to record to an SD card at the same time as using the USB. Ooh, I could be immediately sold on that if yeah. that is a feature. Yeah, okay. And so that was one of the things that I really liked about this product uh, compared to some of the other stuff that exists is that you can do both. My field recorder does do dual recording, but only when it's being used as a field recorder, not when mm -hmm. it's being used as a USB interface. So... Okay, I, I could totally be sold on switching out to the Pontrack P4 if that feature works as described. Yep. Yeah, th that would be great. I'm a man who believes in the excess of input devices to computers. Oh, okay. My desk is covered with input devices. Sitting in front of me, I have a mouse, a trackpad, a keyboard, and a drawing tablet. Oh, the, the full suite. I have the full complement, <laughs> and I want to make my recommendations for each. You just need a foot switch. But I have that now, the Stream Deck foot switch thing. Have you seen that? Uh, no, I was just making a joke, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I have one. You know, you know the Stream Deck, the thing that you press the little buttons. Yeah, the... I I see people use this. I've, yeah, I've, it's one of those things I've never quite felt like there's a place for this in my life, but I I get the idea of it. But they make a Stream Deck pedal, hmm. so you can I don't know run some shortcuts. They said what they have it for is for like streamers to be able to hit the mute or whatever. Hmm. Oh, okay. So it's a giant mute button. All right. That makes sense. But you can use it for a bunch of different things. But so it's like a bunch of switches on the floor that I'm activating with my feet is just sounds like trouble. Yeah. It's just three. But hey, oh, like maybe to change scene or something. You know, like you're, mm. you're gaming, you're in like a big gaming moment and you want to hit the button. <laughs> right. Make sure that you're, I don't know. Don't break flow. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so my recommendation for the drawing tablet is the same as it's been forever which is the Wacom Intuos Pro trackpad magic trackpad I mean of course like why would I use anything else it's the best trackpad and I use this as mostly a secondary input device to my mouse so I use mm. this for panning zooming scrolling this is really good for audio editing so like a lot of the time I will be so this is how I have it I have my trackpad on the right my drawing tablet on the left because mm. I am cross dominant. And so I'll be doing like fine edits in logic with the drawing tablet and then zooming and panning around with the trackpad. And so, like, I'm using both hands. That's really good. I also use keyboard commands too, but like, I like to have that kind of compliment when I'm editing. So I'm, I'm like in it. But mm. I, for most of my kind of just general usage, I use a Logitech mouse. I use the MX Master 3S. 
So the MX Master 3 has been around forever. It's my favorite mouse. It's very comfortable. It's got all the features that I like. But they recently added the 3S, which has a silent click. I just want to say, you recommended this to me, yeah. I think on more techs or I don't know when. I bought that. I am so happy you recommended that to me. because yep. I, I have the MX Master 3 in my office, which love that mouse so good. I really like the ability to, like, it has a horizontal scroll wheel uh, next to your thumb. Mm-hmm. And to me, that is that is the killer feature for doing the kind of stuff that you're talking about doing with the trackpad. Like, the ability to horizontally scroll and vertically scroll and do, like, zoom in and zoom out stuff with modifiers is amazing. But I was so happy that you told me about that silent version because... When I'm on the couch, just like, you know, watching TV with my wife half-heartedly as I'm also doing something on the computer, I just hated having something making like click, 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 click noises as we're watching TV. The new like 3S version, the silent version of that mouse, I can't believe how silent it is while also still feeling satisfying to click. That's the important part. Yes, that's the, that's the killer yep. part that I wasn't expecting. Is like I've used quiet things before, but they've always felt mushy and terrible to use, but this one is still satisfying to click. I was like, "Oh, this is great. Mm-hmm. This is amazing." I use a lot of silent products for my recording environment, right? So like my keyboard has silent switches in and they are good, but they don't feel as good as the louder ones that I use. Mm -hmm. But this one, it's like, I actually prefer the click feel of the S to the Mm -hmm. regular MX Master 3. Yeah, I could conceivably switch over to that just entirely. On my main desk, I still have one of the regular MX Masters. But if I had to buy another one, I think I actually would prefer the silent version. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's very satisfying to use in a way that I just would not have expected at all. Keyboards. All right, so I get the impression, Mike, that you're quite experienced with keyboards Mm -hmm. uh so you know for me i'm just a keychron guy i've just like bought the same kind of model keyboard for forever but so i i don't have the vast experience that you do with keyboards Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts here mike my favorite brand is a company called mode okay their keyboard the mode sonnet is my favorite keyboard absolutely bar none it feels great to use. It was pleasant to build. Oh, you built this one. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. It's a 75%. And so what I like about that, because I have lots of various fun keycap styles, right? Like different designs. A 75% will allow me to show off the majority of a keycap set. So like I hmm. like that. And But it's compact. Like I like the, the what's called a TKL where it's like bigger, but 75% is like the nice middle point. So I like that kind of key layout. It's got enough keys on it for me. But they've done a really good job of making it into a small package with some really nice design elements. I really love the modes on it. They have another product coming later on this year called the Envoy, which is a more affordable keyboard that they also will sell as a full kit, including switches and keycaps. Hmm. I had the opportunity to try out a pre-production unit of the Envoy and really, really liked it. And my, I have one coming in a couple of months, I think. I think this one could be a, just a very good default recommendation to people now because, you know, it's not cheap, but it is not like wildly expensive as some of these keyboards can get to. Mm. But you can get from them like a full kit, which includes, you know, the full board, the switches, and everything for like around $300. So you'd still have to assemble it, yeah? But you're, just, you're getting all of the parts in a package. Yeah, I believe you still have to assemble it. But the assembly for this keyboard is maybe one of the easiest that I have experienced. Hmm. Like they've, they've done a really good job of doing that. But this keyboard as well is like easily customized too, which I think is very interesting. Like they've built this system of kind of like how bouncy or stiff you want the typing to feel. And the way that you do that customization is very, very simple in a way that I think would encourage people to do, even if they weren't very familiar with building keyboards. So Hmm. I really like, I really, really like what they do. One of my favorite things of mode stuff is that you can configure them with a bunch of different design stuff and they have a full configurator on their website so you can see how it's all going to look. So they are my choice. Like they make my favorite keyboards. Uh, Yeah, I was just playing around with the configurator for a bunch of options. I don't know what they are. It looks good. Mm. I'm intrigued by this layout. 
just a little bit because I do like having just a tiny bit of space for the arrow keys and for the function keys. Yeah. Like I really like these Keychron keyboards that I use, which I think it's, it's basically the same layout. It's just a little bit more compressed. But if there could just be like a tiny bit of space to physically distinguish the arrow keys, which I'm using constantly, that would be nice. An exploded layout. Oh, is that is that the term for it? Okay. Like the Keychron Q1. Hmm. I like the Keychron Q series of keyboards. Mm-hmm. They are customizable keyboards, right? They're more akin to the types of things that I make. You can take them apart and do some modding and fun stuff with them. But Keychron's done a great job of leaning into it and like becoming a really good starting point. Mm. But their seventy five percent has an exploded layout. But I tend not to like the visual of that because it ruins the like lines, I think. Yeah, I, I, was, I was like, I like this layout less because I don't want the arrow keys lower. Yes. That's why I, I like the other one. I like the look of that better. I just need a tiny bit of space. I don't actually, I think I might find that annoying that the, especially if they're half offset like that, mm-hmm. the arrow keys are 50% lower to create the space. I think I would I would not find that pleasant at all. I think that would be irritating. Not pleasant. Um, Especially when switching between typing on like the Apple keyboards, I wouldn't. Yeah, I think I think I would find that no bueno. I think probably worth mentioning. I reckon this is a good. It could become a thing, maybe more into the future even than it is now. When it comes to work devices, VR headsets. So we both have the, I guess, for work focuses, the uh, MetaQuest Pro. <laughs> yes, we do, and people know that from this from the special that we yep. just put out about yep. how amazing they are. Yep. <laughs> Pin in that for the future, really. I just like when we revisit state of the hardware in the future, I wonder if that point's going to change. I would yeah. say yes, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I predict that that's going to change in the future. Uh, but yeah, if you, uh, <laughs> if you want to hear our thoughts on that, we recorded an entire special episode about it. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Memberful. Memberful is the easiest way to start selling memberships to your audience, letting you build sustainable, recurring revenue, and is used by the biggest independent creators on the web. Maybe you have an existing membership set up, but it's getting too complicated to manage, and you want to simplify things so you can get back to focusing on what you are best at. Well, Memberful has everything that you need to run a membership program efficiently and fantastically, including a streamlined and powerful checkout, easy-to-use member portal, transaction emails, and a member management dashboard. Memberful seamlessly integrates with the tools that you already use, including MailChimp, WordPress, Stripe, Discord, and more. They really do make these integrations incredibly simple, which I love. We use Memberful at Relay FM to power our membership program. You've heard us talk about more tax a bunch of times on the show. That's how we use it. And so when someone signs up for more tax, they get the ability to be added to our members' Discord, which is just for them. And Memberful's integration with Discord means that we don't have to do any management of that, which is fantastic. There's nothing manual in that process of bringing people in. And also with Memberful, we have the ability to deliver podcast feeds. So we can have exclusive members-only content that people get when they sign up. And it's really easy for them to grab those feeds, put them in their podcast app of choice. And it's super simple. We love that. It's obviously an important part of what we do at Relay FM, And Memberful makes that incredibly easy. Go and get started for free today. There is no credit card required. Go to memberful.com slash Cortex. Go there right now and check it out at memberful.com slash Cortex. This could be the start of something exciting. Our thanks to Memberful for their support of this show and all of Relay FM. So we've spoken about the tools that we use for work. Mm -hmm. We typically use these tools in our offices, but there are a lot of different physical things in an office desks, chairs, all that kind of stuff. Spiders, if you're working in the basements. Yeah. Uh, Roombas, air purifiers. What desk are you using in your life? I think we're both using the same thing, which is the fully Jarvis model for the standing desk, which it looks like when I was trying to do the links today, it looks like they've been acquired by Herman Miller. Yes. Which is interesting because I'm using the uh, Herman Miller embody chair as well. So it looks like Herman Miller is trying to corner the market for this kind of stuff. It's no longer fully. It's right. now just okay. the Jarvis desk from Herman Miller. This happened mm. like a month ago. Okay. So th- did the fully company get completely absorbed? I believe so. Okay. Right. Because I was wondering because so standing desks are fantastic. I'm, re- I'm really happy to have the option to use them that way. 
But there's one thing that I was trying to find that fully made a product that I think must have gotten destroyed in the acquisition. Uh, which I, think they, I think they called it like a, the, their TikTok. But the generic term for this is a balance board. Yeah. This is a thing where if you're going to have a standing desk, I bought a this on a whim, but it turned out to be a critical piece uh, for the standing desk. And it is just this little thing. It's like a seesaw that you're standing on while you're working at the desk. And I don't know why, but it just gives you this little... <sighs> Somehow slightly balancing is physically easier to do for a long period of time while you're standing and working than just standing. I was just going on Amazon trying to find one that looks similar. I think the key is you want one that's low profile. So you don't want one that looks like this is actually an, an exercise in balance. You want something that's like a very low profile legs on a rocking horse kind of thing. Like that's what I have. And it's great. Every time I put the standing desk up, if I'm not actively walking on the treadmill, I want to be standing on that little balance board. And it makes all of the difference in the world for using a standing desk in upright mode. Yeah, I think trying to do some Googling, it may have been called the float deck. Something yeah, like something that. something like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. The, the only reason I was trying to find it is it's the lowest profile one of these I've ever seen. And I just think that makes a big difference. It's just like very slight balance. Yeah. And all of the other balance boards seem much more like, oh, we're trying to give you a core workout while you're at your desk. Yeah, this isn't for yoga. Yes. It's just so your feet don't get tired standing all day. I found it just significantly more effective than mats that they often try to sell you with a standing desk. Like here, stand on a mat. I find that makes no difference difference at all in terms of tiredness whereas the like a low profile balance board is perfect okay yeah i use the fully jarvis desks too uh, i have a couple here in the studio i like their bamboo one which i do do still sell and i use and have used herman miller embody chairs mm -hmm. forever this is one of those things where like if i could give a piece of advice it is to if you're working at home to invest as much as you can into a good chair. Yes, yeah. Because I did the thing where I went on Amazon and I bought a 200 pound chair and after a year, the Hydrolux went. Mm -hmm. What I like about Herman Miller is while they are expensive, they have a very good long manufacturer's guarantee. So like I've had Herman Miller chairs for eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. One of mine the chair is stuck at my height which is fine because it's my height but it means the chair isn't working and we contacted Herman Miller and we were arranging for them to take it away and fix it and like they're just gonna fix it so like mm -hmm. it falls within their warranty the Herman Miller warranty is like one of the great parts about it but the chairs are just super good I've used the Embody forever it is my huge recommendation they're nicely customizable they make them for gamers now if that you know you need your chair to be a gamer's chair they make herman miller and body gamer's chairs so you know what wait, wait what is that uh, okay what does that mean it just looks a little bit different okay is, is that just an aesthetic look they just they, they made it look okay. more gamery they, it really is just the herman miller and body for gamers i know you keep saying that but it's, it's like when you say for gamers i just imagine oh so it's like pink and black or something like that's what it is okay number one in the faq how is this chair different <laughs> we've teamed up with logitech to make updates the seat has an additional layer of foam to support your posture while you play and we've developed new technology to keep you cool there really isn't barely any there's barely any difference <laughs> it's like a little bit smushier i guess and that's it uh -huh. But it's because mm. you don't need to change this chair, right? Like that that's the whole thing. They've just updated the design a little bit to make it look more gamery. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. It does look yes. cooler. It does look gamery, right? Right. Okay. But like that's the whole point of like if you're gonna make a gamer's version, it's already mm. the perfect chair. So like you don't need to change it. So I agree with you on this chair. I also agree that this is the home office purchase that you do need to kind of bully people into. And everyone always says, I should have done this sooner yeah. is like, buy a good chair. Yeah. If you are working at home, buy a good chair. I think the good chair matters significantly more than a good desk. Like, it's funny, I had family was just visiting recently. And my cousin had been traveling in Europe. And he was like, way behind on work. 
And while he was here, I was like, hey, man, you can just like use my office. It's like, you know, have an actual place to just like work in the mornings because like I'm downstairs in the basement. Like this space is free. And his number one thing is, is like, he's like, oh, I could cry sitting in an actual proper chair again <laughs> doing work as, a, as opposed to trying like work at, you know, at, at random cafes. He's like, oh, this is this is amazing. Like, thank you so much. And the chair was the big deal of like he works at home and he has a regular chair. And like once you don't have it, you realize like yeah. how hard it is on your body working in a chair that's not perfectly designed for you. I used to have the uh, the Aeron, I think is how they say it. It's their older office chair. And at some point, I can't remember, I think when I left the glass cube, I tried out the Embody. And the Embody is a significant improvement. The only thing I do wonder about is I I do wish it had a headrest. That's the o- that, that's why uh, when you said gamer chair, I was a bit like you were hoping Boo. for a headrest. <laughs> I was hoping for a headrest, and I would I would seriously consider buying it. It's the only thing that I know. Most of the time, you don't actually need a headrest when you're sitting at a chair and it's all set up properly. But I do feel like it's something that's missing. And if they made the embody with a headrest, I would upgrade instantly. Or it's it's the only thing that would make me think like. Maybe I should just try out some other chairs with a headrest and see how that is. But yeah, so that that is my only very minor complaint. There is a company called Atlas Headrest who have made an aftermarket headrest. Oh, okay. For the gaming chair. Oh, no, for the gaming version. All right. I figure it will probably work on all of them because it's probably the same, but like... You got, I maybe take a look, but okay. Like, send send me that link. I want to check that out. <laughs> but there's this. I just googled it and it ca- I came across it. So you should you should look at this. Okay. Because I, I imagine that there's probably quite a lot of people that feel the way you do, mm-hmm. especially now. There's the gamers. How oh, does it connect? It connects. I can't anything. work it out either. I, I'm like, hold on. I need, hold on. I I can't I can't deal with the suspense. Let me look at let me look at the back of my chair. Where does this? I don't understand how it fits. Is there a thing that comes... Oh. Huh. I think it maybe just clips on to the back piece. Yeah, okay. The gamer chair might be different. I'll, I, I will have to investigate more than in the middle of our podcast. Yeah. I think the gamer chair has a slightly different connector at the top, but I can't tell if I just pull apart my chair if it has that same piece. It's a no, little bit it's, unclear to it's tell. It's bolted on to the... Oh, oh, I see. Right? They've done a good job of making it look like it was made by Herman Miller. Oh, um, okay, right. Uh, thank you. I, I would have pulled apart my chair to see where this plugs in. It, it looks so integrated. Yes. I thought I was looking at a different part of it. Okay. Sold immediately. I don't know how, but like, just try and triple check that it's, it's not just for the gaming one. Look, if, even if it's not for the other one, I'm going to try to make it fit. <laughs> I got a hammer. I can make it fit. <laughs> And I'm sure you have a black chair, so yeah, they have a black one, so you probably don't even need to worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. Great, thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a shot. Pro gamer. <laughs> yeah, for all my. Yeah, streams. I mean, I understand why you would want that. I, I've never wanted it, but you do that leaning back thing that you do when you think. Oh, I guess that is the difference. Yes, I lean, I lean back much more. Hmm. Like I've okay, seen you yeah, do yeah. it in VR, right? Like as well, like you, when you're really thinking about something, you, you, you take a big lean back. And so mm. I could imagine you would like some headrest support in that in that moment. Uh, great. I've just sent a message off to get that ordered for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned earlier about my charging woes for mm-hmm. my devices. I use a variety of products by close friends of the show, Studio Neat. Mm-hmm. They make the Material Dock line of products. Now, the products that they have now available are all focused around having a Qi charger, having like MagSafe chargers built into the products. Mm-hmm. But I used to use their products when it was, you would like thread a lightning cable through. Yes, you, I remember doing that. Yep. That's what I have. Okay. And so I use those ones um, and I love them. Eventually, I guess I will have to move to the upright charger that they have now when the USB-C phone comes. Although I am going to try and modify <laughs> with a Dremel no, or something my, no. to see if I can get these things to work because they are perfect the way that they uh-huh. are. But I will try. It won't work, but I will try. I might as well give it a go and see if I can fit a USB-C cable into this thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are what I use there. 
And I wanted to just give two recommendations around charging solution things. My preferred delivery of power is Anchor stuff. Mm -hmm. And Anchor make a selection of the GAN charging products now where you can have like a couple of USB C power delivery and a regular USB. I just have one of those just plugged in to a charging port on my desk and I can just swap out cables and I really like them for that. Mm. But my main recommendation is the uh, Miros Smart Power Strips. This company, Miros, makes a surge protector which you can turn on and off with HomeKit but you can also break oh. out every plug into its own individual HomeKit addressable switch. Oh, wow. So it's like six power outlets and also USB. They come as a group in HomeKit, so you can turn it all on and off, or you can break it out into seven. So you have six plugs and then the USBs. Oh, wow. That is killer. Right? And so you can have different automations for different things. So like... I have like an automation that if I have my, there's one that's just called iPad and mm -hmm. it will just turn on and off at random parts in the day to keep the iPad charged. I have at home, we have a lava lamp. The lava lamp is plugged into one of these and it will just turn the lava lamp on and off mm. for a few hours in a day. At home where I have like a bunch of, I have like a basic what I call like the network closet, right? It's just got like all kinds of things in there <laughs> from yep. the alarm system to the internet and all that kind of stuff. And I have each of those set individually. So if I need to power cycle one, I could just do it from my phone. Mm -hmm. Miros products are great and I'm a big fan of them. I actually don't know if they are available outside the UK. This might be one of the very rare things <laughs> where it's UK only. Because I believe, I believe this product comes from the Hong Kong market, I think. And we have the same power outlets. If they are available outside, great. But America, you have a ton of things. So. <laughs> yeah, we haven't even gotten into the world of HomeKit stuff, but this is... This is always the great pain of living yep. in the UK is yep. there's so much cool home kit stuff. I'm like, oh, wow, I want that. And I was like, oh, it's not available in the UK. But this is the one. This is a great <laughs> one that we can get. Miros Finally. Make, they make loads of home kit products as well. Like they have like a whole set of things that they make. Indoor and outdoor power solutions. And like it, that really, they're, they make some super cool stuff. I've been very happy with my Miros products. Okay, well, I've got, I've got a... Check them out. I'm, I've been home kitting up the house ever since that basement office. So I'll I'll see I'll see what other stuff they've got in there. I will tease. We are toying around with at some point in the not too distant future doing like a state of the home as well. Yeah, for like home automation because I'm I've done a little bit and I'm about to go much further in a mm -hmm. couple of months' time. So I wanted to not talk about that stuff today mm -hmm. because I have lots of things that I still have yet to implement. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I'm in, I'm, in the, I'm in the same space of like sort of halfway caught with a bunch of HomeKit stuff. That's why it's like, oh, please, like send me all of your companies that you know make good HomeKit stuff that actually works mm -hmm. in the UK. This is one of them. Yeah, the one that's still really killing me is like air filters. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Like, <laughs> it's gotta be one. Well, like a, air purifier yeah air purifiers i haven't found one that's good and it's, it's very frustrating yeah i would also like to know that yeah uh maybe people could write in and let us know <laughs> we can leave this as an exercise to the cortexans yeah i think miros make a smart wi-fi air purifier works with apple home kit oh okay well I'll, I'll check it out you look at that and let me know <laughs> the, I, I will the thing that's been killing me is like the, the reason i was interested in just like oh the sockets work with home kit is trying to like find stuff that if there's no UK version of, oh, it's HomeKit, at least I could just control it with a socket. So I have that with like a couple of space heaters. But as far as I could tell, it's like all of the air purifiers, if you try to turn them on with the socket, they like require some additional confirmation. And I hate it. I thought I had solved it with the exact same thing recently. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's nope, like, nope. You still need to press the on button. You turn it's it like, on. Oh. And it's like, come on, man. I'm looking at it now. The Mira Smart Wi Fi Air Purifier. Okay, great. I will check that out and I will report you back. Can report back. If we ever do that state of the home show. Mm -hmm. When it comes to what's on my desk, Gray, there's always something on my desk. Yeah. Every single day. It's called the Sidekick Notepad. Oh, Sidekick Notepad. Is that on your desk every day? It is day? available on my desk because it is perfectly made to sit between me and my keyboard. <laughs> on sale at cortexbrand.com. I swear I didn't set this up, but I just realized like, oh yeah, C can we say that we're trying to make Cortex Brand one of those companies that's 
if you like one of our products, you like lots of our products. Like, our, I know our lead designer spends a lot of time making sure these things are nice in absolutely every way. I guess it's what we're hoping to achieve, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. that's kind of the goal because it's what we like. Mm -hmm. That there are certain companies that you can just keep buying any product that they make and know that you're going to get some kind of consistent experience Mm -hmm. from that. So like Herman Miller is one of them and Bellroy is another one. Peak Design is another one. And so, yeah, my hope would be that in a few years time, people would consider us the same way for the things that we're making of like, oh, I want this kind of product. Cortex brand make it. Well, I know I'm going to like that. Like, mm-hmm. That is a goal for sure. We just, we need to get more products out. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How hard can it be to painstakingly make a new product? How hard can it be? Can't be hard at all. All right, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to transition from office stuff to exercise stuff. Because I feel like my office is also half exercise room i mean so many office buildings have gyms in them we'll say this counts sure that counts right i've got my city sports treadmill which is the treadmill that i use when i'm at my standing desk and walking i can't wildly recommend it i can simply (laughs) say it is the one that has lasted the longest without breaking is maybe the way i would say it Sort of like this weird market of wireless chargers on Amazon. It's always different companies every time you go to buy one. For whatever reason, the low profile treadmill market feels like it's the exact same thing. A bunch of like weird fly by night companies with suspiciously similar photographs that are all like, hey, did you want a treadmill to have under your standing desk? I just don't understand why there doesn't seem to be a reputable vendor in this market, but I don't know. Maybe some spaces are just that way, but clicking through product photos on Amazon for this kind of stuff is very weird. You're like, are all these companies the same company? Are they different companies? I don't understand what's happening. Our, I was saying that, chief revenue officer at Relay FM, Carrie, got mm-hmm. promotion recently. Congratulations, Carrie. Congratulations. Uses a company called Walking Pad. Walking pad. Okay. Yeah. And she's very happy with this product. Walking pad. All right. It's foldable, I think. They do like a foldable one so you can put it away. Oh, weird. Yeah. So I was just getting like derailed because their advertisement on their website feels very TikTok. It's like, why is it so fast? Why are the cuts so fast? Well, I mean, I think you just answered your own question. No, no. I I know. I know. That's exactly it. Yeah. Oh, they make a foldable rowing machine. What? How does that even work? (laughs) This is one of the weirdest. This is so strange. It's one of those water ones, too. Okay. Foldable rowing machine. Okay. I think... You know what? Looking at it, I think the foldable rowing machine actually makes more sense than a foldable walking treadmill. I agree. This seems more sturdy than the foldable walking treadmill. Yeah. Okay. How interesting... Well, that's weird. I had a water treadmill that I was also going to recommend <laughs> in my exercise area. <laughs> wow. I use one from a company called Water Rower. This comes with a warning. All right. Warning. <laughs> warning. <laughs> this is one of these areas where I followed the rule of fewer but nicer. So this was one of our purchases at the start of COVID time was we're like, oh, God. We got to get some exercise equipment. So I got myself bikes, I got myself weights, and we got a rowing machine. And I decided like, okay, if we're going to do this, let's go all out. And I got one of these water ones. The warning is, if you like rowing machines, which I do, and I think you do, right? You have a a rowing machine, right? Yeah, I have the one that you've seen in every gym everywhere, the Concept 2. Right. I like the Concept 2 a lot. Mm -hmm. I was very used to it from my gym and i have one in the studio i think for a certain kind of person and maybe we're both that kind of person rowing works as an aerobic exercise in a way that lots of others don't yeah Yeah. i hate running yeah the cross trainer is a nightmare you know and i like most rowing machines mine does i think yours might too they have like you could put a tablet on it like it's got a mounting place you could just Mm -hmm. like watch a video and just row it's great what I really want is I want my VR headset to work with my rowing machine. That That is my dream. Uh, I want to be able to like look around and, and see a little now lake. that is interesting. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. When I was looking, did you ever come across Hydro? No. 
It's like Peloton for rowing. You are not selling me on that. No. But okay. This is why I ended up not doing it because it was really expensive and also required a subscription. But they have like a screen with instructors who are rowing on open water. Oh, weird. Okay. So they are like doing the class and they're out on open water and you're rowing along with them. And I always thought that was like a really nice idea. So similarly, yes, how great would it be if you could put on a headset and be rowing on open water in VR, right? That feels like the way to go. I just realized that the name is more clever than I read. Hydro, like row. It's right? a great name. Okay, I get it. But anyway, I don't know if it w- worked, but that was one of the very first things in like early COVID days. I was like, come on, someone must have made like a VR rowing thing that I can use. But I realized uh, like that was basically when I didn't quite understand how VR really works. I was like, oh, no, this is a much harder problem mm-hmm. than I first thought it was going to be. But that would be one of my top requests is for someone to solve this problem. But so anyway, my warning is this. If you're a person who likes rowing as aerobic exercise, If you ever use a water rower, you will not be able to go back to the regular rowing machines. I feel like it's such a better experience that it kind of instantly ruins you for using any of the other machines. And I actually told this to my same cousin who was visiting where he's like, oh, hey, you've got that rowing machine. I was like, listen, buddy, I got to warn you about something. Like, do you use rowing machines a lot? He's like, oh, yeah, I use them in the gym all the time. I'm like, okay, you might not want to do this because the experience of the water rower just like is much nicer and you will find the gym ones more frustrating. And he took my advice and skipped using the home rowing Why? machine because what's, of What's that. so much better? The only way I can articulate this is with like pens, right? Where if you've never used a nice pen, you kind of think, how much nicer can a pen be to use? And you just don't have an appreciation for it. There's something about, it's the resistance feels very real. Okay. It really feels like you are on the water, which is why I think like I wanted the VR part of it so much is because like this is a convincing experience. It doesn't feel like pulling on a cord where the tension is adjusted because the water is is like circling around. You have the subjective experience of like building up speed because your next pull can be slightly easier because the water is rotating already. It really gives you the feeling of like, oh, I've stopped and now I need to get up to speed. And once I'm at speed, it's easy to maintain this pace. That's the best I can try to do to put it in words. It's very convincing and it suddenly makes the traditional rowing machines feel like a completely different experience. Mm -hmm. So I have been totally ruined like it's it's awful like i found the aerobic exercise that i like but now if i'm ever at a gym that it doesn't have a water rowing machine it's like oh okay well i guess i can do this but it's just not the same anymore and i kind of wish i never knew (laughs) like i wish i had just gotten your rowing machine i'm fascinated by this folding rowing machine do you think you're going to give it a shot no i like my rowing machine so i don't want to change it i'm Mm -hmm. very used to the the concept too I figure I know what you mean, though, right? Like the difference between the like fan that you're pulling and the Mm -hmm. the water. Plus, I imagine there's just like a... a, a, Does it sound good? Yes, it does sound good. I'm sure that helps, too, like with the overall experience. Mm -hmm. Hmm, Okay. So that's on the aerobic side. And then on the strength side, I got these weights, which are made by a company called (laughs) Powerblock. What? What are you laughing at? In the early days of COVID... You suggested that I do strength training uh-huh. and suggested that I get some kind of weight thing for home. Mm-hmm. And they was, these kinds of things were so hard to buy, I could only buy one. Oh, okay. Like they, I couldn't get a pair. How did that even, were you like buying it off eBay or something? Amazon. How did you just get one? Okay. And so I bought one set of these adjustable dumbbells. Mm-hmm. I just this is very it's like a funny remnant of the beginning of the pandemic where like now I just have this one heavy <laughs> adjustable dumbbell. Um, what was your experience with it? 
I mean, I liked it as like it made sense to me as a thing, but at the time I didn't really know what I was doing. Like it's more effective oh, for me right. now. Right, this is so long ago. Right, of course. Now that I'm more experienced with like what how weight feels and stuff, that like this is a smart way to do it. Like rather than having like six different dumbbells of different weights, like mm-hmm. the fact that they're adjustable is is I think it's quite clever. But they are a bit clunky and noisy. Yes, so the, it is. They are noisy. I completely agree with that. I am aware that, uh, so I've moved these down into the basement. So the basement is now also an exercise area as opposed to just being up in our apartment from before. And especially in the concrete box, I'm aware that I always want to have my noise canceling on when I'm using this because it is just a little bit like there's unpleasant clanking sounds. Mm -hmm. So I might as well just turn on the noise canceling. But I think these things are great. If you haven't ever tried different adjustable dumbbells, you won't appreciate how many problems this design solves. So there's lots of different versions where people try to do adjustable weight dumbbells. And I just think this design in particular really fixes a lot of annoyances that a lot of these different things have. So I highly recommend them, although I I always think it's funny. I have never seen a company that needs to consolidate its product line more than this company. Every time I go to look, it's like insane to me that they have five different versions of what is basically the same thing. And even as a very motivated consumer, it's confusing to be like, wait, which of these things? Like, I actually need to buy expansions for the ones that I have now. And I have bounced off this website like three times, even trying to figure out which is the one that I own. It's not obvious. Yeah, like these these all look exactly the same, but we have Elite USA, <laughs> Pro EXP, Pro 50, Pro 32. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, if, if you're listening, Power Block Company, you need to have two at most versions of these things and really i think you can get away with just one version of these there doesn't need to be four different versions of what looks like the exact same product so that's all my indoor exercise stuff and then for the last one people always ask because it's a really unusual looking bike that i got it's featured in uh one of my youtube videos but i got this bike from go cycle which is an electronic bike company here in the uk I really like it, but the thing about this bike is the primary feature of it is that it is a folding bike. So if you want to hit the bullet points of an electric bike and you also don't have a ton of space, so it has to fold, this is like the only company that does this well. So I really like this bike. But I'm, I'm finding myself in this funny position now that since we have the basement space available of like, oh, I would not have purchased this if I were buying a bike now because the folding ability of it is not the main thing anymore. It used to be like there was just no place in our apartment for a bike. So I had to have something that was just tiny. I'd love right now if I like if I was going to buy a bike today that's an electric bike, I'd love to try uh, one of the Van Moof bikes. I know it works with that Find My integration yeah, thing, Find My as well, yeah. <laughs> which is like weirdly high on a feature for something that I want. But I think this is another as far as I could tell, this is another like Brexit casualty. Like you just cannot get these in the UK. Like I swear they used to be sold here. Like I remember looking at them and now it's like completely impossible to find them. I would still say, like, for anyone listening, if you want an electric bike and you want something that folds, Go Cycle is, like, the only game in town that's good. I'd love to try a Van Moof, but I just can't get my hands on one. Well, i just gone on their website, and they've got the Van Moof S4 available in June. Oh, in the UK? Yes. Okay, all right. I'll, 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 oh, great. Well, now I'll be tempted for... These are, like... <laughs> these are something special, these bikes, right? Like, I can see it. I don't know if it's 3,000 pounds worth of bike. <laughs> no, I they, know, I know. They like... look so stylish. Like, they... It's one of those things where it's, like... I feel like you would feel value mm-hmm. when using it, but it's a lot of money. Yeah, no, it is a, a lot of money. I mean, you want it to have Find My built into it if you're spending that <laughs> amount of money on it. Cause... Yeah, I mean, even with my Go Cycle, it's like I will never leave that thing locked anywhere. That is entirely for like I'm enjoying riding around and then I come back home. Great. Like... I have just found what might be potentially the greatest add-on purchase I've ever heard of in its description. 
Okay. All right. This is 328 pounds, one off payment for three year coverage. If the unthinkable happens, our bike hunters will hunt oh, your bike yeah, down. Oh, yeah, yeah. They call them bike hunters. That is the best name. <laughs> we will find your bike if it's stolen. Yeah, th- this is why Van Moof is, is just a very interesting company. And this is one of those things that they they have this insurance feature, which is like, we will find that bike. And that, that's actually how they came to my attention in the first place was, I'm sure they were doing it as promo, but just some unbelievable stories of how far they've gone to recover their bikes. And it, it seems like they know that this is the main concern of people who are going to buy like a top of the line, super expensive bike. Okay, this is incredible. So we will recover your bike within two weeks. If we can't, we'll replace your bike with one of yep. the same. That is awesome. But it is the only way you can sell a three thousand pound bike, and I know you have to pay more to add this on. Which, like, a three thousand pounds? Could you not <laughs> include it? Like, I don't know. But like, that is. A I think great that, I think thing. that's fair as an add on. Like, I, I I don't mind companies adding that as an add on. Again, like in a situation okay. like mine, where I would just be using a bike recreationally, and it is always going back in a like locked, secure place. I'd feel like no, I don't. I don't need that you because need I'm just it. never yeah. going to use it. So. And it also allows the company to get a sense of how much do people value this as an add-on or like how much is this actually costing us. But they're a very interesting company and that, and now I will find myself tempted again. But this again is, is like one of these things where it is super expensive, but I am very hard pressed to think of purchases that I have made that do better in terms of overall increase in quality of life than mm. getting a nice bike. These uh, moose don't even look like e-bikes either. They don't have the like telltale like this is an ele- e-bike, like it's got some big thing on it, you know, like some big motor or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I am very willing to spend money on a nice experience here because just the like the pure mood lift from every time I've ever gone on a bike ride around London is just huge. Yeah. I mean, I've said it before. I think London is a weirdly good city for cycling around. Like the infrastructure has gotten much better, but also for me, just the interestingness density is very high. Like I can pick any direction and there's interesting things to look at. I've specifically encouraged my wife. I've told her sometimes I'm like, you know, if it's after in the morning and I just seem like in a slightly down mood, just tell me to go for a bike ride. And a hundred percent of the time, I always come back feeling great. So it's like you you pick areas in your life where you're willing to spend a bunch of money. And this is one of these areas of like, yeah, it's totally worth it. Like quality of life increase very high. And again, I really sort of found this because of the pandemic and kind of thinking about things to do but i'm really glad that i kind of rediscovered cycling again in the Mm -hmm. past few years like i did this a ton when i first moved to london and then it got completely lost in my life when i worked as a teacher and i just never came back to it and i'm like i'm so happy to have come back to it in like the e-bike era which also makes things so nice like i love the ability to put the bike on a kind of low power mode cycle a whole bunch and then for the return journey put it on like max assistance mode it's like it's so nice to feel like you don't have to hold back how far you want to go because you have to like preserve that same amount of energy for the return trip anyway two quick additional things for anyone who does cycling at all i'll mention this because people don't think about it but if you are going to be on a bike Everyone always thinks about like, ooh, I need to wear a helmet. Like helmet is the top safety piece of equipment. No, you're wrong. The number one thing you should wear when you're on a bike, which almost no one does, is gloves. Gloves are the actual thing you need to wear. The most frequent injury, which is really bad, is your hands. So you can have very small bike accidents or just like fall off a bike because you lose your balance. And you will tear your hands to shreds when they hit the ground. So it's shocking. Like basically no one ever thinks about wearing gloves, but get yourself a good pair of padded gloves. And I honestly think 
If you have to pick one piece of safety equipment, that should be the thing that you wear. Your probability of an accident here is much higher for like minor accident that is extremely inconveniencing and very painful is hand injuries when you're on a bike. But you should also wear a helmet. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying like no one thinks of it, and it's the thing that That's is. That's a good PSA. Everyone knows yeah. you should be wearing a helmet. Everybody knows this. Whether they do or they don't, that's their own decision, which isn't necessarily a great one. Yeah. I see so many people in London without helmets on and I don't get it. Like I really don't understand these like pick up a bike for the afternoon kind of things. Like I because nobody has any safety equipment at all. You know, like that doesn't make sense to me. I guess what I'm trying to express here is like there are plenty of circumstances where I can completely understand why people don't wear a helmet. And a lot of recreational cycling can fall into this category of like, I'm only on protected bike lanes or like I'm out in the country and I've just brought a bike. Right. So like there's there's literally no traffic. I'm just doing whatever. And I just think in any of those circumstances, you should still be wearing gloves. Right. Even if you think like I don't need to wear a helmet for, you know reasons that you've decided on that's fine you're insane to not wear padded gloves if you're on a bike that's my take on this public service announcement over Mm -hmm. and then final thing i'll mention for bike stuff a thing that i thought was a total gimmick but is also massive quality of life improvement is companies make these automatic electric tire pumps and I bought one just on a whim to see if it worked from a company called Psych Plus, C-Y-C Plus. It's amazing. It's just like a big tic-tac shaped thing that does the air pumping of the tires for me. But like I, you know, it's a bit like the water rower. I never knew how much it mattered to really hit the maximum pressure on the tires in your bike because I would just get tired from doing the manual one and I was like impatient getting ready to go. It's like, no, 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 just use this thing to like put the tire pressure back to max before you ride and it makes the whole ride so much nicer and to achieve that with a manual pump would take a lot of effort Mm. and a lot of hindrance before you were going to go do the thing. So if you have a bike... Get an automatic tire pump thing. I just thought it was a gimmick, but it's not. It's great. In poking around the Van Moof website, you can actually order their new one for delivery in July. Mike, would you stop? Would you just stop? Stop tempting me. You can just go to their website and get a Van Moof S3. You could just like order it right now, and it will be delivered in July. And as it says on the website, Gray, the sooner you order, the sooner you ride. Quiet, you. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Fitbod. Getting fitter is something that has knock-on effects in other areas of your life that you might not expect, like having more energy and sleeping better. But it can be hard to know where to start, and that's why I'm super pleased to let you know Fitbod is an easy and affordable way to build a fitness plan that is just for you. Just for you. That is the important part. Fitbod has developed incredibly powerful technology to learn about you, your goals, and your training ability to create a custom dynamic program that is based on your experience and any equipment you have. Hey, maybe after you listen to this episode, you're going to have more exercise equipment than you did before. Well, with Fitbod, you can put all of that in so it can help tailor your exercise plan to include this stuff if you have it. But you don't need to because... And this is where I got started with FitBod. FitBod has tons of body weight only workouts, which is a fantastic place to get started. And getting started with FitBod is so simple because they have over 1,400 HD video tutorials in the app with exercises shot from multiple angles to make sure that learning every exercise is incredibly simple. Personal fitness shouldn't be about competing with other people. What you want is something that's going to work just for you. That's when it sticks and you'll see the results that you're looking for. And FitBod knows that everybody has their own path to fitness, which is why they customize things so deeply. They understand your strength training ability, studies your past workouts and adapts to the equipment you have on hand to create a training plan that is maximized for you to get the gains that you're looking for by intelligently varying intensity and volume between sessions without overworking muscles or underworking muscles because that can impact results negatively. So they balance all of this into a fantastically well-suited workout routine. One of the biggest things for me with the bodyweight exercises and building more strength in my body is I find it easier to play video games. Like a lot of the pains in my wrists and arms that I used to get, it's just not a thing anymore. So 
Fitbod, thank you for setting me on a path so where I can play as much Zelda Tears of the Kingdom as I like and I get no pain in my wrists anymore. Personalized training of this quality can be expensive. Fitbod is just $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. But you can get 25% off your membership by signing up at fitbod.me slash cortex. So go now and get your customized fitness plan at fitbod.me slash cortex. That is 25% off at fitbod.me slash cortex. Our thanks to Fitbod for their support of this show and Relay FM. Should we talk about entertainment? Uh, sure. What do you want to talk about in entertainment? I have like three categories inside of entertainment. Okay. Tablet, game consoles, e-reader. Oh. Oh, I do have something to talk about here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's do this. iPad is the tablet. For me, it's the iPad mini. Mm-hmm. That is my go-to. It is the computer I use at home, mm-hmm. like over my iPhone, over my laptop or anything like my iPad mini is just the best. I love it so much. Um, I think that Apple really nailed it. Like it, It's for me the, the product which feels the most true to the original idea of the iPad of just like mm. the, the content consumption part, reading, watching video, like that screen size is just right for me for, for what I want out of all of those kinds of use cases. I'll just run through all of mine real quick because gaming console for me, the Steam Deck is my primary game console. Yeah. If a game is available on Steam, that's where I will get it because the Steam Deck has changed how I play video games. It has made so yeah, many same. games become drop in, drop out in a way that they weren't before. A really simple one for me is PGA 2K, like the golfing game. I've been playing that recently on my Steam Deck where I can just turn on the Steam Deck, play around and turn it off. It's like super simple and I'm like it's like a 20 minute game experience or whatever. Mm-hmm. With my PlayStation, it's like, turn on the PlayStation. The PlayStation boots up. Got to choose the game. And now I'm like taking over the whole television. It's just like a bigger hole to do for a game which doesn't require that from me. A game like God of War. I would want to play that on my PlayStation because it is this big, beautiful thing. It's like an event game. Mm -hmm. It is not play around in PGA 2K, right? Which is like, it just doesn't feel like to me it needs the television. Right, right, right. And so the Steam Deck for me makes so many games easy to jump in and out of. But I do play any game I can. I will play it on the Steam Deck because I just think it's fantastic. But then I also have my Nintendo Switch and my PlayStation 5 for games that are exclusive for those. Mm-hmm. And like when it comes to exclusives, that's at the moment where the big exclusives are. They're on the Switch, on the PlayStation. So you've got like Zelda and you've got Spider-Man, for example. There's games for me that I'm excited for this year that are Mm. available on those platforms. So that's where I'll be playing them. Yeah, my gaming life, I can live without exclusives. Like there's there's basically no exclusive that's really going to get me to care enough. But that's why your recommendation of the Steam Deck, was it this year, I guess? It was just like recommendation of the year from you like Mm -hmm. i cannot believe how good that thing is it's everything i wanted the nintendo switch to be but actually is love it love it love it like can't rate it highly enough just so so good and is like the perfect couch gaming thing Mm -hmm. it's like if if i am not playing magic on my big ipad it's like i am probably on the steam deck and yeah it's just so it's such a great form factor yeah i was worried about the weight it's just not an issue it's just ergonomically comfortable. Like, that's how they balance the weight. Like, it just feels mm. good to hold and use. So, yeah, I've been very happy with the Steam Deck. It's changed the way I interact with games. Mm. It was in my review of my last year's theme that the Steam Deck made a huge difference to the way that I am able to relax because I'm able to just have so many more games available to me at any point. And it's also just a very comfortable device to play video games of any kind on. Yeah, like going from like I played Cyberpunk to Truck Simulator, mm-hmm. and all of those experiences felt great on the Steam Deck. Yeah, I, I never really thought about it until you mentioned it now. But however they make it work of to like instant on, instant off yeah. is incredible. There's no like booting up into the gaming environment. It's just like no, as, so- as soon as you're done, you just like put it down, and then it's right there when you come back. Yeah, I just turn it off like any other device, like my Switch, like my iPhone, like my iPad. Like I don't close the game, shut down the system. Like, it's none of that. Mm. Simple. What are you doing for e-readers? No, I don't do for e-readers. Oh, so you don't do for e-readers at all? Is this category just here for me? It's just for you. (laughs) (laughs) 
I was I was wondering, like, oh, what does Mike do for e-readers? He doesn't. I should have remembered because Mike doesn't read. <laughs> no, Mike doesn't like that at all. Mike is literate. He can read. He just doesn't. I choose not to. <laughs> yeah. I listen. I like to listen. I don't like to read. I think I never told you, but I got the uh, the new Amazon uh, e-reader, the big one. The Scribe, I think, is the oh, name for it. Oh, the Remarkable Killer. Uh, yeah, the Remarkable Killer. I think it just never came up on the show, but whenever a- Amazon announced that, I was like, instant purchase for me. I'll say it's it's interesting. All of their features, as as far as writing on it goes with the pencil, I would describe all of this as proof of concept. It works. It doesn't work great. They're saying that they're going to be improving it in software and rolling out features over time. Amazon is extremely slow and always has been on the software development side. So as far as I can tell, nothing has changed about it since the day that I bought it. I'm not using any of the handwriting stuff that they kind of pitch in the marketing. But I still uh, love it because I have always wanted just a bigger physical screen for reading books. And that was one of a short list of frustrations for me on on the Kindle. It's like, these Kindles are great, but they're just too small. I always really like to bump up the text huge anyway. Right. So like on a small screen when I'm dealing with like giant text, it's way too much flipping. So and this is 10 inches, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of iPad screen size, like regular iPad screen size. Yeah, it's like a little smaller than a regular iPad, which is, I think, just about perfect for book size. It feels like it's a little bigger than a normal book would be closed, but a little smaller than a book would be open. Mm. So I I think they really nailed it with the size. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I'm just very happy to have a bigger screen for reading and having it around has... um. It genuinely has like encouraged me to read more hmm. because it's just a more comfortable reading experience than having this little small screen. So I can't really highly recommend it or rate it as a notebook to write with because the feature set is just too limited now. But right. I could see that if they, you know, like if you're thinking about something like a Remarkable, it does not come even close to touching the feature set that the Remarkable has. Even in terms of like moving things that you've already written, it's like, no, 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 you can erase stuff, but you can't circle something and move it. It's like, oh, come on, Amazon. That's like the most basic of all features. But it has the, the, you know, the possibility, which is like why what we were talking about is the issue with the Remarkable is, well, you can make notes on your Kindle books, which is the thing you can't do with the Remarkable. So like that's the problem. Yeah, so uh, I'm very happy with it. Even if they take a long time to add what I consider to be very basic features, Mm. I'm still really happy with it as a product because it's a bigger screen Kindle, and that is uh, something I have wanted for years. Did you see that Remarkable made a keyboard case? (laughs) Oh, did they? Yeah, in the ongoing arms race that we've got now in uh, these types of devices. It's called the Type Folio. Mm. So you can now turn the Remarkable into a laptop essentially everything becomes everything else and they have an app on the iphone that the notes that you type and draw will now go to i gotta hand it to remarkable they have continued their development in such a way that i would have thought the kindle scribe was the end of their business yeah they're they're still holding on but this the type folio like came at just the right time for them i think and i was like that's smart Mm -hmm. because now you've turned your reading ideation tablet into like a small laptop like a really minimal laptop yeah again it's like i know this product isn't for me just in general but i was again i was like they did it to me again the way Mm -hmm. that i have felt for years where every time i look at a remarkable i'm like huh could i be that person and now they've added the keyboard to it i'm like huh (laughs) Could I be that person? <laughs> you know, yeah. they they continue to get me. So like, uh, hats off to them. Yeah, no, it, it it is really intriguing as a product. There's something about the idea of an e-ink computing device tablet that is just very attractive. It is maybe like the most aspirational technology product I have encountered. The remarkable, mm. like for years, I have been like, That's can I be that guy? Right. And Am the I answer is good? always no. <laughs> but I keep asking the question. Let's talk bags. Okay. Well, we're talking. We're talking travel here. Is what we're actually talking, right, Mike? Yeah. I mean, bags travel. We'll talk travel, but we'll talk about bags in the travel category. Okay. I just think my life, Mike, especially in year of work, 
very small circle that I, that I exist inside of. <laughs> like travel as a topic. Oh, I'll, have, I'll have to hear from Mike about this. So what bags are you using for travel? This is where Bellroy comes back into the mix. Mm-hmm. Big Bellroy. I have been using the Bellroy Tokyo Tote Pack for a couple of years, I think. This is my daily bag. It is part backpack, part tote bag. And that's what I like about it. I like that flexibility. I don't put a lot in this bag. It's where my laptop goes, you know, taking back and forth from home to the studio. And also anything I might need in that day. You know, so like if I'm bringing something from home or to the studio, you know, it will be transported here. And I have some basic essentials in here too, like an umbrella, you know, like little bits and bobs like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So this is just like my daily bag. I like that it's small, it's lightweight, and I like the flexibility of backpack and tote bag. Like a, a, what, does that, what, what does that mean to you when you say that it's a tote bag as well? I don't quite understand what you're getting at with that. I can also just carry it in one hand. Oh, okay. All right. I know that's not necessarily how people think of tote bags. They think of them as over the shoulder. Okay. This is just like, I can just hold this in one hand, kind of briefcase style, I would say. Okay. All right. I get it. Right. Hmm. As well as as a backpack. And so I like that flexibility. I find that to be comfortable. This bag is really easy to pick up and put down. Like, for example, if I was changing trains, right, I'm on the underground and going from one train to another, I would just hold it by the handles and not put it on my back. Because mm. I've like I've already taken it off, I sat down, and I'll just pick it up, walk to the next train, put it back down again, that kind of thing. So I like it for that. It's, it's flexible and it's carrying as well as what I can put in it. Did you go with the uh, the big version or the little version? Oh, when I bought it, there was only one version. Oh, okay. 20 liters or 14 liters. That's interesting. I'm going to look into that. I don't know what mine is. How's the weight of it? Oh, it's very light. Hmm. This is a, like a genuinely very nice just like daily bag. It's very flexible. It's got not too much, but just enough pockets. And like it, the size, it being small and not having a ton of pockets is good because I can't fill it with crap. Right, yeah, yeah. It really is constrained to just like what I'm carrying with me on that day. I find myself intrigued because, as we mentioned earlier, like my everyday bag is the Peak Design everyday bag, Mm -hmm. which I still really like. I've used for years, but my biggest complaint with it has always been like it's very heavy because it's designed to protect camera equipment. And it's like, I love that bag. That bag is very clever. There's a ton of features that I find hard to move away from, but it just kills me the weight of it. Mm -hmm. I'm always kind of in the market for something that could replace it. And uh, I don't know, maybe maybe this is something worth trying. Well, I bought another bag. Oh, okay. There's another one. Another Bellroy bag. Because what the Tokyo Tote Pack isn't is my travel bag. It's not Mm. the bag that I'm going to take when I'm going on a trip. It's just my daily bag. I have and have used the Peak Design Everyday Backpack like you for years as my traveling bag. And my issue with the Peak Design Backpack is its inflexibility. I can see that. I feel like this bag has a way it wants to be used and it doesn't like to be used in any other way. It has like a maximum amount of stuff in it, which is that you can put in it, which is very obvious. Like it's very rigid Mm -hmm. as a bag. I was looking around at bags, which meant that I got every Instagram ad that I got was a bag (laughs) ad. But that was genuinely helpful because I was looking for bags. Right, right, yeah. But Instagram knows. And then Bellroy found me and advertised to me the Venture Ready Pack. Mm. And I bought one of these. I have yet to use it on a trip. I'm okay. actually going on a trip next week, so I will be using it for the first time. But this bag spoke to me in just the ways that I like. One, again, brand that I know, and I like their stuff. I like mm-hmm. their thinking. It is a new bag from them. It's 26 liters, so the capacity is actually a bit bigger than my everyday backpack. That's big. But the dimensions, very similar. Because the everyday, like the Peak Design, is just a big bag. Hmm. right like it's just very large where this one i think dimension wise is just like a little bit taller but every other dimension is like mostly the same also the bag doesn't look very big the peak design bag just looks big all the time Hmm. this bag has like a lot of pockets a lot of organization i like that it's just kind of like a big open bag like that's kind of what i want just like a big open pocket and i can just put stuff in it it sits flat 
has a specified pocket for an air tag. Perfect. So yeah, I'm gonna try it out. But this is this is the bag that drew me in recently, and it's the one that I'm thinking is I'm pretty confident is gonna replace the peak for me because I think I've kind of reached my end with that bag. Mm. It's interesting. I, I I wish there were more photos of like the like the different packings for the interior because it looks like it has a bunch of like pockets on the side, but you're saying it's, it's sort of like a big hole. It has like some pockets inside and it has a pocket on the top. It has a couple of pockets on the top of the bag. It doesn't have external side pockets like mm. the Peak Design does, but it also has one of those like privacy pockets that you could put like a uh, passport in the back or whatever. Hmm. But I never really got on very well with the side pockets with the Peak Design. I was always looking in the wrong side. I didn't like those. So I want all my pockets on the main compartment so it's easier for me to get to everything. Because I would be like, open one side. Oh, it's not in here. Close it up. Open the other side. Oh, it's in here. Like yeah. whatever it is I was looking for. So just like the system of the bag is very good, but mm. it didn't ultimately, I don't think it really worked for me. So yeah, I'm looking for something else. This is where I have landed for now. Hopefully it will be where I stay. Yeah. Backpacks are tricky because I, I think the thing for me that, like why do i still use the everyday backpack is because like my problem with backpacks is sort of what you just said that you wanted i find that they can just be a hole right like it's a big hole that you're carrying and the verticality of it feels like it's easy to have stuff just get like lost in these bottom to top layers of like you've just thrown all this stuff in and that to me was like the killer design feature of the everyday backpack is the ability to open it up sideways so like i never used that backpack in portrait mode in a sense i was always throwing it on the table opening up those side pockets and i felt like this is how i want to experience the backpack mm -hmm. i want the least depth and the most spread so everything is accessible to me and that's like that's what i really love about that bag and i just i haven't seen anyone else do that i think this is intriguing because of how deep the top opens so yeah. like you can it seems like you can really pull it apart that's what i which, like yeah yeah which might be part of it but it does still look like it's functionally a hole that you're that you're carrying which has always been my frustration with backpacks hmm. yeah it's hard back backpack stuff is really really hard Backpacks are one of these things we've said before, like some markets are, are functionally infinite in size because everybody wants different things. Mm -hmm. And backpacks feel like one of those markets. Like there can never be enough backpack companies for the things that people want out of their backpacks. It's just like a market that can never be satiated. I know we've been recording for a long time, but I am not letting this episode end unless I can mention dog stuff who would try and stop you i feel like you might try to stop me from mentioning dog stuff you didn't seem very warm to it at the beginning i don't have a ton to add when it comes to dog stuff do you, do you not have a lot of dog hardware recommendations mike not yet who knows if we're doing this as a tradition for long enough maybe i will have dog stuff but mm -hmm. right now no dog stuff okay I, I, I will look forward to that day but yes so as a household that has a rotating crew of visiting dogs, we've had the opportunity to try out a bunch of dog stuff. So number one thing, if you have a dog, a thing that you probably have not thought very much about is the dog collar. It just seems like, oh, the dog collar. It's just like how dogs are. I'm here to tell you, no. If you have a dog, you must get a dog harness. Don't have a collar around the neck. Have one of these like harnesses that goes across the chest anytime you take them out for a walk. The key thing here is like harnesses are so important for dogs. If they try to go like chase after something, right? You don't have that horrible moment where like your dog runs for a squirrel and it chokes itself. If you have an actual harness on the dog, you can like control them much better and in like a way more safe range. I don't want to get into the whole thing, but there are so many negative knock on effects from having a collar on a dog that you can just avoid with a harness. They can get all kinds of like nerve damage from the collars. It's no good. So I don't know like globally a company to recommend, but here in the UK, my wife and I, we use a company called Fleece Dog Harnesses. They have a bunch of great harnesses and there's another one called Cozy Dogs. Both of these are companies that make like really nice, really soft harnesses that are comfortable for the dog and also better for you as the person who is actually walking the dog around. I feel like I see Julius Canine. 
everywhere. Uh, which one is that? And it's just like one of the weirdest like brand names. That- oh, yes. I know this one. Yeah, the Julius Canine branding is very funny. It's just, I don't understand it. Who's Julius? I don't know. Um, Don't get me wrong. If you have a Julius Canine har- harness, I, I think that's like a million times better than a collar like anything is. Looking into it, we're generally like in favor of, of um, V-shaped harnesses. So they're, they're harnesses that like come down sort of over the shoulders and then go under the chest. The key thing, if like if you're looking at a harness on your dog, is when you pull, you just want to make sure that the pressure is not near the neck. The pressure is actually like on the chest bone, right? On like the hard part of the dog. And I think the Julius collars can ride a little high depending on how you've actually fit them because they have a strap that goes across. And it's like, if that strap is perfectly aligned, it's no problem, but it can often like ride up. I'd still say like any harness is basically better than any collar for taking a dog out for a walk. Yeah, it also just seems, I don't know, like I'm, I don't know enough, so like I ain't judging, but collars seem so barbaric in a way. The, like if the dog was to run and you had to pull the dog back and it's pulled back by the neck. There's just something about that that doesn't look right to me. Like many things in life, you come up with the first solution. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Right? so like you're domesticating dogs. What are you going to do? Well, you have to put a rope around its neck. That's literally like that's the only thing that you can do. And then you evolve that over time. And I also understand the convenience, right? The dog has already got the collar on and you just clip the lead on the collar and you're good to go. Well, like with yeah. the harness, you've got to like dress the dog every single time. Yes, there there is a little bit of like dog dressing with yeah. the harness for sure. Yeah, because like you're, the dog isn't wearing the harness around the house, right? <laughs> Big fashion dog. It's a bit of formal wear for just being <laughs> around the home. With our visiting dogs, what we often do is we just, if they come with a collar, we just take the collar off and put all of their identifying information on the harness. And yep. so it's like the harness is actually the only thing that they wear when they go outside. Yeah. Again, I just like, I mentioned it because I think it's a thing a lot of dog owners sort of just don't really think about. And that like, that totally makes sense. There's a million things in the world. You don't really think about it. But if like, I have to, if I could like make a single change for all dog owners, this would be the change is walk them on a harness. The second big change that I would make is I have a, I have a dog food brand recommendation. So there's a company. You are in the- stretching this now. <laughs> I will tell you. This, you are stretching. Okay. I'm going to skip that one, actually. No, you can make it. You can make it. I'll just, say, I'll just say it really quick. You know, you should give your dog some nice food. Don't just feed your dog kibble for their whole life. So there's a company that we really like called Different Dog. They make like fancy dog food. There's going to be something like this in the U.S., you should give dogs food you could at least conceivably eat. That's my recommendation there. You don't want to have something that you wouldn't want to be the only thing that you eat for your whole life. Question. Yeah. Have you eaten the food? So I haven't eaten the food. Okay. But my wife has a suspicious number of times said to me, you know, you could eat this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going away this weekend. You, by the way, <laughs> you can eat the dog food. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always been like the tone that I get from this is a little bit of like, my life would be a lot easier. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> just try it you know yeah. you never know you, you can ju- like you, you, you never know right it's and it's uh, i think the next sentence is usually something like she goes you know it's it's human grade right which is also like when you, if you go into a restaurant and they're like this food is human grade it's a bit like yeah i'd hope so right <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at the pictures, Gray, and like someone could give me this, and I, I don't know if I'd be mad. I'll let you try it the next time you come over. No, I'm good. <laughs> That's incredible. Oh my god. So here is a human slash dog recommendation. Hardware wise, I guess this is kind of health wise. I recommend that everyone should try a electric toothbrush. I've got a Sonic Care electric toothbrush for myself. This again is one of these things. It's like the water rower. You get an electric toothbrush, you think it's a gimmick, you try it, and then you can you can never go back to mm-hmm. a manual toothbrush. Do you have an electric toothbrush? Yes, I, I have the Sonic Care as well. Do you have this, the USB C charging one? Is that the one? Um I don't have the USB C one. Mm-hmm. I have the one that has the cable in the case. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of the case because... chargers. 
I was horrified at the price of the USB C one when it's basically the same <laughs> toothbrush. <laughs> they just put a USB C port in the case. So I just yes. got the one that had the USB A port. I think there was another feature as well that the USB C one had that I didn't want. And so I went with the the one that has the USB A built into the case. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sonicare was totally taking advantage of people like me who yeah. are like one device away from a pure USB C travel yeah. life. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm totally going to do that. Like, I'll, I'll buy this just to get all of this done. Everyone should brush their teeth, including dogs. Uh-huh. So you can get electric dog toothbrushes. This is a thing that exists and it is a thing that we use because you want to keep dogs' teeth clean. So there's a company called Emmy Pet, which makes a basic dog tooth care set and includes an electric toothbrush. You use an electric toothbrush, let your dog use an electric toothbrush. Incredible. Okay, and then the very last thing that I'll mention- Oh my God, there's more dog stuff? There's one last one. This is the last one, I promise, (laughs) right? You have more dog stuff than you had (laughs) for like entertainment stuff. Last one I'll mention is again, a thing that I thought was kind of ridiculous at first, but I've totally changed my mind on it, is what are called like slow feeder bowls. So these are bowls that- are designed to slow down the dog while eating. And so it comes in this hexagonal pattern. And so the idea is like, as you are dishing out your human grade dog food, which you may or may not have warmed up in the microwave ahead of time, you can spread it out in these little like hexagon pockets in the dog bowl. And this basically helps prevent the thing that many dogs do, which is when you put the food in front of them, they just wolf it down in a single bite in seconds. This like slows them down a little bit while they're eating. I genuinely think it is better for them. It's like a better experience for them. I I was like not very sold on this originally, but I've completely changed my mind on this. Like slow feeder bowls, it's totally the way to go. I have to ask, what came first for you? the need for the ball or the fact that this is a hexagon ball <laughs> which for you which one came first mike uh, it's it's a hexagon because hexagons are a perfect pattern for mm-hmm. this exact kind of problem circles wouldn't work very well squares wouldn't work very well triangles obviously would be terrible they're too small there's very few things which you can uniformly use to tile a surface and hexagons are the best of gods for that mm-hmm and for everything else. Well, I mean, not everything. <laughs> that's things. not be crazy. <laughs> right. Okay, and that's, I, swear, I promise, that's it for dog stuff okay. for today. Lightning round? Lightning round. Lightning round. What would it be if a state of the something without a lightning round? You need a lightning round for random extra things. Yeah, including the Folsom Knife by James Brand. I love this knife. I use it for packages which is maybe a little more than is needed for oh, a package. Oh, come on. You just want to feel cool while but you're opening a, a package with this knife. Good looking, good feeling knife. Comes in a bunch of finishes and colors. Uh, I love this knife. I've had, I have two of them. Because <laughs> I bought one because that was the one that I had. And then, do you know Aaron Draplin? No. The designer. He is very famous designer. He's one of the people behind Field Notes. Um, I love his design style. He makes just really great stuff. He did a collaboration with them and made an orange and black one. And I got that because it was just so freaking cool. So I have one at home, one at the studio. This company, James Brand, make really nice products in general. Mm -hmm. And I am a big fan of this knife. It's one of those things that like I've had it for a number of years now. And it's just like a product that is very well made. It works very well. And it brings me joy to use. Do you keep it as a pocket knife or you just like, have it around the house? It stays on my desk. The hole, is that for just grabbing it when you open it up? Or does that serve a different function? The hole in the blade? Yeah. Yes, that is to help you open it. Ah, okay. So that's just for grabbing it. Yep. Cool. It looks great. It's a really good looking knife. Yeah. They make really good stuff. They, like, If you are looking for a nice knife, James Brand make really, really good products. I think as a as a nice mirror for that, I'm going to have a Hawaii holdover product. Uh, when I was in Hawaii and terrified of the dark, I asked the internet to help me with flashlights. And uh, I found just a fantastic little flashlight. It's called the Nightcore TM10K flashlight. I brought it back. I keep it in my closet. 
it's one of those things where like yes you have a flashlight on your phone but every once in a while you need a flashlight that can really do the job oh it's big it's not as big as you think it is it's like it fits in your hand oh no i looked at the pictures and thought it was a size and then they had a picture of it in someone's hand and that's when i thought it looked big right okay yeah yeah it's not it's not like a keychain flashlight it's a flashlight you would leave somewhere every once in a while it's just very useful and it is insane like how it can turn the night to day it's amazing (laughs) as it very helpfully has written on it ten thousand lumens (laughs) yeah yeah it's uh with two exclamation marks (laughs) (laughs) why would you do that that's so strange well because ten thousand lumens is a lot of lumens (laughs) but why do they need to put it on the thing with two exclamation marks because it's a lot of lumens. I don't understand what your problem is with these two exclamation marks. That is so funny. The, the thing that to me is the funniest about it is it is insanely bright under normal operation, but it has an, it basically has a like, it feels like it's out of a movie. There's like an overheat mode. So you can press and hold a button and it will go as bright as it can until the moment it's about to burn itself out from the heat Jeez. that it generates. But when you do that, it is incredible. <laughs> So yeah, it is it is the most amount of light in the smallest amount of package. Love it. I want to recommend my favorite slippers. Oh, okay. Mahabis. You know, I was just in the market for some like house shoes. Yeah, I use these as house shoes. I specifically wear the Curve brand. Okay. So Mahabis, it's kind of like a, they have rubber on the sole. They have like a rubber sole so you could wear them outside and inside. Like if you had to leave the house to get something come back in or whatever yeah that's what i'm looking for i owned the classic for a while but i found that i was wearing the t- the outside toe down and i think it's because when i'm here at the studio the way i kind of sit i sometimes will like kind of kick the ground a little bit i don't know why yep. i do this it's just a thing that i do and so i was wearing the fronts away but the curve have the rubber go over the toe as well mm. i find it to be very comfortable and you can what I like about them specifically is they have this kind of like elasticy part on the back so you can choose to either step into it like a slip-on and wear them mm-hmm. like slip-ons and that kind of rubber area goes down or you can then pull it up over the back if you were, say, walking outside and you didn't want your shoes to fly oh, off. Oh, nice. That's a nice little feature, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've had... I have these at home. When something is... This is how I can tell that I love something. I've just realized it now. When I have... It at home and at the studio. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good metric for it. Yeah. And I have a pair of these here and there. So that's like, that's how I know that like something has become important enough in my life that I need it in the two places that I'm in. Nice. All right, I, I'm totally going to uh, pick up a pair and give them a try. Next, I'm going to recommend the Theragun. Mm. <laughs> have you tried a Theragun, Mike? Yeah, I have the Theragun Mini. I want the proper one. We just haven't done it yet, but we've been meaning to get one for a while. Yeah, this is, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I think this falls in the category of like, I'm going to say it is a massager, but that's not exactly right. I would sell the Theragun as it is a jackhammer for your muscles yes. is what it really is. And also, here's what I'll say about the Theragun. You may have seen it online. I saw it on Instagram ads for a while. And I'm like, that is BS. That thing is doesn't work. That's what my was my first yep. thought. It's like, there's no way I believe that this actually does any difference. Mm -hmm. Huge difference. And also feels great. Yeah. This was a piece of equipment that also became critically important when I started exercising more. Mm -hmm. I realized like, oh, this is actually a thing I need to try to help like smooth, not so smooth out, but like you need to jackhammer your muscles sometimes like when you've exerted them. So like on like quadriceps in particular, I find like, oh, if if I've had a hard leg exercise, like using this really minimizes soreness the next day. But in particular, like I've kind of mentioned a couple of times over the years, like I have a problem where I have um, some of my back muscles will spasm and lock Mm -hmm. in what I can only describe as in my ability to remember, I can't remember anything more painful than, than when this happens on occasion. And the Theragun as a jackhammer for muscles is the is like a thing that can really take that from impossibly painful down to like tolerable and I can move again. So this is a thing that has become an, an absolutely critical piece of like travel kit for me is I got the mini version that you have and it's like, I will not go anywhere without that thing. So yeah, I mentioned here again, because like 
Just like you said, I think a lot of people can see it and it looks like a kind of weird gimmick, but mm -hmm. it's really good. If you have any kind of muscle problems or if you exercise, you should totally, uh, totally look into one. And I've tried the like the big one, the Elite, and that thing is amazing. Yeah, that, that one is a real jackhammer. Sonos Era 100. Okay. I'm a big Sonos fan. Uh, it's one of the things that I've been adding to my home as I'm like kind of changing what I want uh, in the new home and how it operates. And we have more music playing in the house than we've had before. And I originally bought the Sonos One speakers. Mm -hmm. And they are like it. They were very good. I liked them a lot. One thing I didn't really know, and it didn't bother me, but I just didn't know that the Sonos One is a mono speaker, and the Sonos Era One Hundred is a stereo speaker. And I was interested in the Era One Hundred because I wanted to get more speakers than we had. Like I ideally wanted to have one in every room in the house, and we had a couple of rooms that were free. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll deal with this later on. And when the Era 100 came out, I bought a pair of these to go uh, where we play music the most, which is one in the kitchen and one in Adina's office at home. And the Era 100 is a very well thought out product uh, because as well as it being just a Sonos speaker, it also has Bluetooth and a line in. Mm. So it can be used in so many environments. You can use it as a Bluetooth speaker. You can use it with the Sonos app. You can use AirPlay on it. You could also plug in a record player straight into this thing and play music <laughs> from it if you wanted to. Have you done that, Mike? I bought a Sonos Play 5 for our record player before the Era 100 came out, and it's one of their bigger ones. But what's really great about Sonos with a record player is you can put the music on the record player and play it everywhere in your home where there's a Sonos. Oh. And that's huh. the same for any line in. It, like it, you are lining it into the Sonos system. System, right, not that particular speaker. Oh, interesting. I didn't have very thought clever. That way. I I huh. really love Sonos. Like I, I I'm very happy with this kind of product in general. But the Era 100 gave me something I have truly never experienced in technology before, where I did a side-by-side -side comparison and was blown away by the results. Like I I had the the Sonos One and the Era 100 next to each other, and I was playing the same piece of music. I played it on one and then carried it on on the other one, and the difference was obscene <laughs> in how <laughs> much better it sounded. And so, yeah, I really love Sonos products, and I think the Era 100 is like a great starting point if you want to consider a better home audio system. In the UK, it's £249. And I think for a speaker of this quality, that is very fairly priced. Okay, my last lightning round recommendation. The Ember Mug and Cup. So Ember is a company that makes cups that will heat your beverage to a desired temperature. And they also make a travel thermos, which does the same thing. So both the cup and the mug, they have a little battery in them and uh, you put your beverage in. Once on your phone, you can like set the temperature that you want things to be at and then the battery will do its best to keep the temperature of your beverage at your desired temperature. And it has a little coaster that it uses to charge. Oh man, I just went to their website. And this yeah. is so smart, and I didn't know about this. I think it might be in America only at the moment. They make a baby bottle. Oh, wow. That's that great. Is genius. I didn't know that. That's such a good idea. That's very clever. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, I think, I th I think that's a new one. Yeah. The, the thing about this is, in some sense, it's like the opposite of what I was saying before with the bike, where it's like, oh, I have a big quality of life improvement from this really expensive product. Now, an ember cup is more expensive than a cup right but the I, I think for like single products in terms of quality of life improvement per dollar per use the ember mug has to be one of like the best uh, expenditures of money i've ever made it's like i am drinking coffee all the time and having it just always be nice and hot is is like such a luxury so i am surprised at how much i like this mm -hmm. i had tried before some of these little like heating pads for coffee cups and it's like and it worked fine but the difference with the mug is like the ability to keep it at a precise temperature is 
really great. I know you would also appreciate not feeling like a constant fire hazard on my desk, like a hot little plate is. Yeah. Is very nice. This is better than that for sure. <laughs> yes. That that was that was part of the reason I got the mug in the first place. That can like scorch the the liquid too, right? Like if it's just like constant heat, like what the ember yes. is doing is it's taking it to a temperature level. Yes. It's it's not just constantly heating it, which is a thing that um depending on how picky you are about your coffee, the constant heat can make it go bitter faster. Whereas like the ember trying to maintain a temperature is is different from just, I have set it on a tiny stove, which is on my desk to keep it warm. And the real killer thing for me has been the mug version, because now that I'm spending most of my mornings in the basement to write, it's like, well, I don't have coffee making equipment down there. And so I just like fill up the mug bring it downstairs. I've got one of the little charging discs for it there. And so this way it's like all morning while I'm working in the basement, I have nice and warm coffee in a way that like, the the thing that's really nice about it, as opposed to like, why don't you just get a thermos is a thermos can keep the coffee too hot, right? Like I make the coffee right in the morning and then put it in a regular thermos and then it's too hot most of the time. So it's like that perfect temperature, so nice. I really love it. It's again, it's a thing that seems like a frivolous purchase, but it hits like high frequency in my life. Nice, like quality of life increase. Divide that by the dollars spent and it's a complete no brainer purchase. Love it. I will finish off with another liquid focused purchase. Oh, uh, good. The Lark Pitcher, L-A-R-Q. So I had a Brita filter pitcher Mm -hmm. and was unhappy with it for two reasons one was the f- like it's a, it's like filtered water right and mm-hmm. i mean one thing is i'd seen that they can get moldy the filter area which isn't great mm-hmm. but also it frustrated me that when you would put the filter into the picture you'd press the little button on the lcd screen and it just ticks down on a timer but yes. that timer doesn't mean anything yeah except time Right, <laughs> and then it's like the time's up replace the water and it's like you've got no concept of how much water i've put through the system mm. like if i go away for two weeks that's two weeks off of the timer even though i've not actually used the filter for filtering the water mm-hmm. so i was looking around and found Lark and I was aware of Lark because they made a they make a bottle like a water bottle that has a UV light inside of it for killing bacteria and they make a pitcher that has that so that was part one so like the Ooh. idea of there being the potential for less bacteria build up inside of the pitcher and so it filters the water with a UV light as it passes through and then also does a self cleaning with the UV light which is great. So obviously you have to clean the pitcher, but I like the idea of the UV light there to kill off bacteria. But my main reason for this is it has an app which you can connect with Bluetooth to the pitcher. It's very simple, but it tracks the amount of water that passes through the filter Hmm. and tells you to replace the filter once the amount of water has passed rather than it being on a fixed timer. That's that's what I want. I've got one of those Brita filters as well and... I, th- I think you've you've kind of nailed my vague unease with them. It's, it's I, I've this is one of those areas where I just thought like, oh, this is just what it is. This is better than nothing, but I don't really like it, and I don't have very specific complaints. But yeah, I feel like you you've just addressed some of my like I don't like this about the Brita filter thing. Like pressing this button on top, it's never felt good. Like I know you're just a timer counting down. I don't like that at all. So yeah, this this looks really good. I think I'm going to give this a try. Yeah, I I like the filter too. Like, it does a good job. The battery and the in the UV thing lasts a while. Like, I, I think it's good. And you know, and if you want to, it gives you stats about how much water you've drunk. You know, like you can you can see that in the app. It's like mm-hmm. it knows how much has passed through and also been poured out. So, and the picture is good. Like overall, I re- I'm very happy with it. You know, like with all of these things, you then buying the filters from mm-hmm. them, but they do them on a subscription, and you know, it's easy enough. So I've been happy. I've been very happy actually with this with this product. It's it's a good one. It's a good addition. Yeah, this is great. I'll give it a try. Oh, and before we end, I forgot to mention when you get that dog harness, get it with a spot for an air tag. <laughs>